Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, webinar. As I mentioned, we are recording the session. Uh, we have Zaid Asago, <clears throat> I'm trying here, <laughs> uh, who will be presenting to us and taking us through this um, PowerPoint for e-learning uh, content simplified. And I hope we'll learn quite a bit. I think sometimes we under um, uh, we under uh, introduce people, and I I don't want to be one of those. So um, I will let uh, uh, Zaid uh, introduce himself as he start the session. Please continue to introduce yourself in the chat. Tell us where you're coming from or where you're joining from, and tell us what you'd like to get from this um, uh, uh, session. Please, over to you. Um, uh, oh, me? Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, Assalamu alaikum for Muslims there and a good morning to everyone uh, attending today. Uh, my name is, as, you, as she said, Zed Ali al uh, I've been involved in uh, e-learning e and online education for nearly 20 years. So uh, hopefully whatever I share is from, based on a lot of experiences and, and so on. And my title is basically PowerPoint for e-learning content simplified. Uh, my emphasis is not to promote Microsoft or PowerPoint. The reason I chose uh, PowerPoint is because most people are using PowerPoint today. Uh, and, 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 and that's one of those tools that, because uh, I've trained people to use, I don't know, I've probably trained nearly 100, I've, I've gone through more than 100 tools, probably more than 100 tools and trained people with probably that, that amount. And, and it comes back to, again, all the tools you train comes back to most people are using either Keynote or PowerPoint as, as a base tool, as a starting point. So. But my emphasis today is to inspire you actually to be more original in your content development. I think what I've felt over the last few five, to, especially the last five years, everything has been so become so automated. So people are not developing anymore, especially their own visuals. They're just uh, re reusing clip art and so on. And, and, and I find it lack of this originality and so on. So I hope that was one of the things I hope to inspire today. It's not to use PowerPoint. If you use PowerPoint, that's great. But to, actually that you are inspired to, to start designing your own content, not just the text, but also the visuals itself. Uh, and, and that's it. But before we start, uh, I would like to, in, if you're in the chat room now, just to introduce yourself again and just say, and maybe one thing uh, about yourself and what you expect to learn from this workshop or this seminar. It's going to be two hours. Uh, you, you, can, you can stay one if you want, but it's going to be two hours. I'm going to focus one hour on design and one about one hour on, 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 on using uh, PowerPoint as a tool to design e-learning content. So maybe uh, we have the chat now. So it'd be a good time just to just quickly introduce yourself so I get to know you. And because sometimes you, you expect certain things. And if I don't know what you expect, I might disappoint you. <laughs> but if I know what you expect, maybe I can live up to your expectations. Huh? So we have Lenga here uh, from Cape Town. She's looking to learn how to make better use of PowerPoint. Okay, that's great. Um, okay, so they have Nomsa. Nomsa wants to... How to use point we are about today. I look forward to learning about how to put up and share with participant interchangeable. Okay. Tony Carr, expecting to learn about how you think about design. Okay, Tony Carr. Tony Carr. Okay, great. Derek. Uh, uh, Derek was a famous uh, detective in, in a German series. I can't remember. Derek. Okay, anyway. Hi, everyone. Uh, Derek says, excited to learn from you. Quite new online facilitation. Just want to. Uh, make a better use of PowerPoint. Great. Okay. Mary, I want to learn how to leverage PowerPoint to enhance learning in my classes. Okay. Wow. Okay. That's a tough one. Uh, Aisha wants to looking forward to get more insights on how to design instructional design content or instructional content. Okay. Great. Uh, in blended learning format. Yes. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have here? Anyone else? Okay. I think these questions are, I'll definitely covered to my expertise. Uh, Golimo Kruger, Kruger is from Pretoria, South Africa. We'd love to design better PowerPoint. Uh, inshallah, we will try to figure out how to design better PowerPoint. Uh, I am personally considered a learning innovation specialist. So what I do is I like to learn new things and find the most effective and efficient way to teach people how to learn whatever I learn. I have learned everything from juggling balls. Now I, I started drawing at the age of 42. You know, so that's one of the things I teach. I'm hoping to do another workshop here later, if you like what I do, in how to do digital, digital drawing. So you can use that for content development. You can use it for teaching and learning. And, and it's also very good for brain development and so on. Okay. Alfred uh, wants to hope to have a great session. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay. Okay. So what we're gonna, I'm gonna have a question for you now. I had already a question, but this is a question. This is very important because if you, if we're talking about design and talking about PowerPoint, which is our focus today, we really need to know uh, what annoys people about PowerPoint. Okay. So the first question I'm going to ask you: What annoys you most about PowerPoint presentations? What is the most annoying part when people present that drives you crazy and they, they're presenting their PowerPoint? It could be face to face. It could be online. What annoys you most when people present? Something that really annoys you so much. <laughs> Reading of the slides, okay, good. So that's not something, so if you want to do e-learning content, they want to read the slides, huh? Death by PowerPoint, okay, that's a famous presentation. Too much content on the slide, okay. What else? Poor slides, okay. Uh, too wordy, okay. Uh, small printers, text condensed. These are standard things. So what you're sharing now is things that, especially when you want to develop e-learning content using PowerPoint, you have to try to find ways to avoid it if possible. Sometimes it's not possible, but if it's possible to do that. Uh, paralysis by uh, PowerPoint. So this, this done some research. Uh, what we can do is uh, we can have a bit of fun. Uh, I have a, uh, in Mentimeter, let's just, uh, let me just show you. Uh, can we go to this here? You see the URL here, uh, menti.com. And let me just make sure I'm running the presentation. Okay, yeah. Can we, if, are you familiar with Mentimeter? Okay, you just go to this URL, menti.com, and use the password, 407483, and you answer the question. Okay, I'm going to share, I'm going to, uh, what do you call it? I'm going to stop sharing, I'm gonna share again. I'm just gonna share again. I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay, so, so what we're gonna do here, we're here. So we're here now. If you can see, uh, what happened to my chat now? So if you can go to this, do you see the chat, Irene? Um, yes, I, we can see what annoys you most. Uh, yeah, if yes. you go to this menti.com yes, and try to answer the question. Mm, let's see if we get that. Uh, why is this? Why is my, oh, there's my chat. Okay, okay there we're getting people answer. You can see the answer coming here. So let's find out what people annoys you most. I give you three, you can choose three of the six there, or seven there. We've got three that has answered. Let me go to the chat here. Okay. okay. So the <laughs> very interesting, eh? So the speaker reads the, to us the slide. So this is something. It's okay to quote from the slide, but if you're just reading the slides, if you want to add audio to your slides in your e-learning content, that's the last thing you want to do, just reading the slides. There's no point, people can read themselves. So that's one of the first lessons when you, you're adding audio narration to PowerPoint is that if you're just gonna read the slides, forget it. It's just a waste of time. People sometimes get insulted and they get frustrated. And it's a waste of time in your time also to have to do the recording. And then text so small, couldn't read it, okay? And then so on. So these are the three uh, full sentences over the complex. So let's, let's, let's take this data. I'm going to do print screen and I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint here and I'm going to put it in the slide here just for fun. Huh? So we have it here. Okay. This is the, the data here we had. Okay. The, this is a bit spoiled. So this is actually found. I've done this questionnaire quite a few times. Do you see here? Wait, let's just see. You can see here. You can see here. Uh, again, what is the most annoying part? Uh, let me just see. I have these pop-ups popping up on the thing. Wait, sorry. Okay, do you see my slides? Can we just get some confirmation you see my slide? Yes. Okay, we see slides. So you see here, slides, yes. uh, we did the, I did this. I have a Facebook group, which you, if you want to join later after this uh, webinar, you, you can see here. Uh, the number one thing that people annoys you most about presentations in general is the speaker reads the slide. Whether it's a lecture or it's an online class, this drives people nuts. And also in, in this survey that we did recently was full sentences, full sentences instead of bullet points is also not very appreciated and text so small and so on. So these are the, the standard things that you can see here. I've done this survey a few times. I just want to show you again. I did it in 2018. And again, every time the number one thing is people just get frustrated when you just read uh, the slides to us. So this is very important to, to avoid this if you're especially going to develop e-learning content and you want to add audio narration. Huh? And this was uh, this 
test, I, uh, the poll I did was actually based on a survey done in 2013. And they found the same thing again was that when the speaker reads the slide, let me just do the pointer. When speakers read the slide, that's the most annoying part. And then these varies, but usually text so small, full sentences, complex diagrams, and so on. These are the most things that drives people nuts, okay? So it's very important to find ways to go around. So we're gonna look at this for the next two hours. We're gonna rethink how we can do this and, and I'll try to give you some ideas on how to make that happen. Huh? Okay, Mr. Bean is there. So don't, uh, this is, I've had some lectures in my life that don't look at the paper, uh, students, they just look at the whiteboard and, and drawings. So. so these are things that we have to try to avoid. Huh? So basically, uh, today's mission is to look quickly a bit on learning, a few things about learning. We're gonna spend about maybe 40 minutes on instructional design. We're gonna look at how we can design awesome graphics. You can actually design, all, you see this, this cartoon here? Actually, this is not done, designed in PowerPoint. This is, maybe if I teach you digital drawing. This is drawn, uh, drawn from scratch. So I have fun uh, visualizing my imagination using uh, digital drawing tools. Huh? And then we're gonna look number four at, uh, at just a bit about animation transitions. And I'm gonna look also at animated GIF. Uh, in PowerPoint 2019, you can actually do animated GIF, which is very cool in terms of putting together a few images and animating it. And you can do everything from engineering, biology, and so on. And then the most important part is recording your, your PowerPoint presentation for e-learning content and exporting it. Uh, today is really not focusing about quizzes and so on. I'll talk a bit about that, but it's really about spicing up your content to make it very engaging, making, uh, simplifying it and making it very, the content itself very engaging. So that's uh, hopefully my focus today. Because I think PowerPoint has possibility to do multiple choice and so on, but it's not the best tool to do that. I think PowerPoint is very good to, to just add audio narration and animation and so on. But when it comes to multiple choice questions and so on, and, and interactivity, that part, part is quite tough. But if you're just doing a presentation, you want to have audio and you want to have it engaging, PowerPoint is actually a very powerful tool, okay. Okay, where's my chat? I just wanna see the chat. These pop-ups is very funny. Last time I did Zoom, I didn't uh, have all the pop-ups. So, so I'm still trying to get this. Okay, where's my, my chat? Is, okay, there's my chat. Where's my chat? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, can I see my chat? Where is the chat? Uh, so I can see if it is. Oh, there it is. Okay, sorry. Okay. So, okay. Uh, let's look at anything in the chat now. Everybody's saying hi. Okay, hi. Welcome, everyone. So, basically, we saw now just that what annoys you about PowerPoint is kind of universal, especially the reading of slides. So that's one of the things that we need to avoid. So now let's look at some aspects on learning. Yeah? Uh, let's look at learning here first. Okay, I'm just getting used to the, okay. So this is very famous, uh, I, mean, I don't know if it's true or not, I'm sure you've seen it before, uh, is that, uh, okay, most importantly, we're moving towards a culture uh, from deep attention to hyperattention. And I think that's also affecting us, it's not just the kids. Uh, we want things immediately, instant gratification, uh, we don't. We don't want to waste our mind. Uh, we, we, if something is not interesting, we cannot focus anymore. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges we deal with students today, and even with ourselves, is that if it's not interesting, it's not exciting, it's very difficult for us to concentrate. And they did this research. You can see here, and they found out in 2013 that humans have a worse attention span than goldfish. Okay. I don't know how they found the statistics from the goldfish, because it's very funny, because I have fish also in my little pond, uh, and I believe they have a attention span actually less than nine seconds, but, uh, but anyway, but what is important here is our attention span is, is not great, and we need to find ways to engage the mind again and again to make it exciting and interesting in the learning process. Uh, and another thing is, uh, uh, have, you, has, have you heard about the 10 minute rule? Uh, this is, uh, uh, I don't know if you know John Medina, it's, it's a famous brain uh, uh, researcher that studies how the brain learns and he wrote a book uh, about 12 rules about how the brain learns. But very important, I like about that, the most important is the 10 minute rule. So have you heard about the 10 minute rule before anyone? Has anybody heard about the 10, uh, 10 minute rule in the chat? <laughs> tell us, Tony, tell. okay. Uh, basically, uh, what 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 John Medina said was that if you if I were to talk monotonous now, just talk, 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 and not engage you at all, the most people average can focus is usually about ten minutes, and after ten minutes, the attention span and the focus and the the brain is not 
attentive. You can see here the brain waves are going down. So to avoid that, uh, we know already uh, when we watch movies, uh, even Indian movies, Hindu stuff, people can watch for three hours and are still focused. So what we need to do is we need to uh, keep on engaging them, changing their direction, maybe have activities, have discussions, have polls, especially if you're online, continuously interact with them to so keep the brain alert and excited and, and, and in, the, in, the, in a learning mode. Otherwise, they will, they will attention. So John Medina found that they call it the 10 minute rule. And this is very good for face-to-face -face education. If you ask me, I think online every four to five minutes, you have to find ways to engage the audience. It could be simple just asking a question in the chat box, but you still have to engage them. And that comes to when you develop an e-learning content, we call it micro-learning now. I don't have any slides on it, but it's very important when you want to design e-learning content is to think it, keep it short. Uh, maybe just three, what do you call it? Uh, three, four minutes, uh, five minutes uh, chunks instead of having it like 40 minute lecture, you record it and just upload it straight. Huh? Okay, so this is the 10 minute rule. So I used to always keep this in mind when I do workshops, when I do classes, I always try to engage people uh, every about five to 10 minutes with something. Because I know if I just keep on talking for two, I can talk for 20 minutes, but are they attending to my mentally, mentally there? And I think that's very important. Okay, so this is, but the 10 minute rule is very easy to keep in track. So you just keep your show every 10 minutes. You realize, that, have I been talking just for 10 minutes? Now I really need to engage. But I think, as I said, online, three to four minutes is, is time to engage. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so we're going to look at instructional design. So I want you to look at these two. This is uh, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. They're two, this is in 2007. I want to ask you which one do you prefer and why? Which PowerPoint presentation do you prefer and what, which one do you like most? Maybe we can look at that in the chat. Eh? You just share in the chat which one you prefer, maybe why you prefer uh, Steve Jobs' presentation. Steve Jobs is on the right side and Bill Gates is on the left side as you look at it. So maybe we can have a little quick discussion on which one do, do we prefer. Okay, uh, Farizan says Steve. Okay, any whys? Why Steve is more exciting? If you ask students, I think most students would prefer uh, actually Bill Gates because they want to get as much content as possible on the slides so they don't have to go to the book. So this is one of the challenges when I, I managed the e-learning department for several universities is that you want to have fantastic design, but then when you come back, goes back to the students. Students usually want to have as much content as possible on the slides so they can spend least amount of time checking the book and other resources. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Sylvanus, uh, Irene, okay, let, let me just go up now, coming in the information, okay, great. Uh, Irene likes Steve Jobs, uh, so Steve Jobs brief, is brief. Derek creates more interest, and I want to know what he has to say. Okay, the curiosity, so Steve Jobs is creating that curiosity, okay. Parizan, simplified slides, easy to understand. Okay, uh, Derek, the right side, prefer the right side, okay. M MBJ, okay, uh, more content with Bill Gates. So he prefers more, open. there's no right and wrong here, by the way, huh? this is uh, how you prefer. Alfred, the details are in the images, okay, interesting. Uh, Kuala prefers, uh, Ralita, Debra prefers Steve Jobs. Uh, Feka, uh, she prefers the graphics of Steve Jobs. Uh, Lucy likes simple, so you can see you have your own preferences and that's fine. Uh, but my experience, my biggest challenge when I train hundreds of academics is, at the same time, you want to have fantastic design, but at the same time, students sometimes have a totally different opinion on what, what they want. Because uh, usually, students uh, focus more on the actual content. Uh, and, and, the, and when you have the least amount of content on the slides, if you don't know the subject matter, it becomes tough unless, unless you find ways to simplify it. And that's where, when you have e-learning, it becomes easier because if you're recording the audio, and even if you're giving a lecture, your audio will complement the slides. Huh? Okay. Let's go back to the slides. Huh? Uh, it's great the forum. Okay, so interesting when they look, they actually analyzed this the, from 2007. Huh? Uh, even the sentences, uh, average words per sentence, they found that uh, Steve Jobs had shorter sentences. He used less difficult words, and his grade level was a US level 5.5. And, and Bill Gates at that presentation, he has improved a lot since then, but his presentation was very high level uh, in terms of the language usage. So I think what we can learn from here is that, which is a big challenge, as you become an expert in any field, uh, you will probably discover that uh, you start using these technical terms, you sound impressive, but students, get, I, 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 as you become more and more expert, if, unless you're aware of it, uh, your language becomes so complicated sometimes that students really struggle. And I think that's one of the big, big, big challenges as we become an expert. We might sound nice, but do our students understand it? So I think one of the skills of a, a great instructional design uh, 
and 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 uh, and an expert is to simplify to simplify things, simplify complexity instead of complexifying simplicity. Yeah. So the idea is to actually simplify anything you have. Use simple words as as possible if you can, and if you use jargon, make sure that people uh, understand the jargon. Yeah? So. Okay, but don't worry. Uh, Bill Gates has improved a lot since then. Uh, uh, since Steve Jobs passed away, he did another TED talk, and this is one of his most famous TED talks. Uh, I'm not going to show the video now, but ha have you seen this one when he let goes uh, some mosquitoes into the crowd, and he said basically it says there's no reason only poor people should get malaria, and actually he, let, he actually just lets go uh, mosquitoes, but he he he, he they give the implication that he's letting go malaria, so people get the shock moments. Okay. And I think this is a very powerful. This was a very powerful presentation. And I think after that, uh, Bill Gates became famous uh, for that presentation, one of the most famous presentations in TED Talks. So, and, and he uses something uh, what, which I, I want to share with you. It was very powerful. And always keep in mind, when you have any form of content, you want to share it. Uh, it's something called the star moment. This is my drawing again. But this is by Nancy Duarte. I didn't come up with the acronym star moment. But the star moment stands for something they'll always remember. Uh, and this is something that you can infuse into your uh, content, whether it's PowerPoint presentation or e-learning content. So when you design your content, you always try to see if, if there's one thing people are going to remember from my content, my presentation, what is it? Have I deliberately tried to infuse that into my presentation? Because when you give, just to do like if you give a conference talk, most, peop most people are not even going to remember your talk, but if they're going to remember the talk, they're probably just going to remember one thing. And what is that one thing? And that's something that you, is good to keep in mind when you design, something that you want to infuse. So if there's anything that they remember, this one thing, special thing that they hopefully they can remember. And how do you do that? You, you can see down here, they can have uh, stories, emotional stories that touch you. Somebody passes away, somebody dies, or somebody overcomes a big hurdle. It can be memorable drama. It can be shocking stats. Stats is very powerful. If you have some very powerful, for example, like Corona, now we're talking about COVID. If there's some very shocking stats, uh, I, I, uh, so that can attract people to your presentation. But it has to be, it, ideally, you want to contextualize it to your presentation. Or it can be visuals, uh, like this one. I'm doing my own drawing here to attract you to the star moment. And also, it can be sound bites and so on. So these are some of the things to make an impact, as Lucy said. Huh? So... I want to ask you now, what do you do when you design, it could be a lecture, it could be online. Do you, what do you try, is, do you try to infuse something to make an impact in any presentation you do? And what kind of strategies do you use? Uh, it's usually called, and what I'm gonna get to is an attention grabber. How do you gain the student's attention? Do you have any strategies that you want to share with the rest of us? It will be nice to share in the, in the chat room and in, in some of the interesting things that you share that you grab the student's attention. Some people have stories, some people have jokes, some people have a question, some people do some funny movements, you know, uh, act up a role play, you know. So maybe you want to share in the chat some of the things that you, you might uh, do to, that you find is exciting and you want to share with others that we can learn from you, okay. Derek, I like to use image which evokes curiosity and, and why that image is there. So that is Derek, eh? very interesting. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Irene, do you have any strategies to uh, gain the learners' attention, the participants or the students' attention? Um, polls, polls are usually good. Okay, polls. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, okay. Polls or yeah, or even unrelated question or kind of jobs, uh, mosquitoes. I mean, um, okay. gets mosquito. <laughs> Something unrelated, which which people wonder. By the time they wonder what is going on, then you know they are awake. Yes. <laughs> okay. Great. Great. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Tony says images that exemplify key elements of the content. Yeah, in other words, when you have something that shocks or something, it should be related to the content. Because you, I, I wanted to share with you a story. It's very interesting. Uh, I did a workshop. Uh, this was, I think, again, many years ago. But the, the, the professor came to me and told me, he said, I have this problem. He said, I always tell a joke in class. You know, I always tell in the beginning of the class, I always tell a joke and the students love it. But they said the only problem with it was some students, they would say when they sit for the exam, they cannot remember the content, but they can remember my jokes. <laughs> so the teacher said, okay. I said, so in other words, when you, if you want to gain people's attention, you don't want it to outshine the core content. The core content has to stand out. If that doesn't, that's what you, that's you want them to remember most. So you have to keep being careful with that. If your jokes are so good and memorable that they make them forget even the content, then it's a, it's a challenge, okay? Okay, uh, let's see other ones there. Uh, 
Jaiso. Jaiso says, use Mentimeter, question to start. Okay, so he uses, uses Mentimeter. Uh, Jere or Lenga, Lenga linking current affairs to theory and concept, great, okay. Alfred likes to use inspiring, inspiring quotes. Uh, and then, uh, Kola, I Kola Wola. Okay, I just say Kola. Kola of recent tried to use more pictures, uh, illustrations, practical situation, jokes related to discussion, great. And then uh, Ade, okay, this one, Ade Buku Nola. Okay, relating familiar experiences with concepts in I'm teaching. Sorry if I pronounced the names wrong. Eh? Okay, Feka, integrate play-based related to content. Eh? Interesting. Uh, Lucy, I like to use everyday experiences to draw a correlation. This is very good. Everyday, something is relevant to the community, something that's maybe happened yesterday and can re if you can relate it to what you're teaching and, and, and that's really amazing. Okay. Uh, Deborah, to take home message, sometimes it's an exciting video or riddle in between activities, okay? Irene, ask people to draw on the whiteboard, very good. Uh, okay, Balachu, ask questions about key concepts, great. And Norma got kicked out for a moment, <laughs> missed the discussion, okay. That's a good strategy also. Uh, okay, uh, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so that, so, but star moment is very interesting. So I'm gonna cover something very interesting, but before you go into PowerPoint, it's a good, don't, I've learned one thing, yeah? Uh, from from the best of the best is that go low tech when you want to design content don't start with PowerPoint or any tool it doesn't matter all things there's so many other things tools start low tech maybe just a piece of paper sticky notes and and try to think about it because uh, once you go into technology you might spend a lot of time on the design I give an example you 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 make this slide so beautiful you spend one hour beautifying the slide. And then after some thinking, you realize I don't need the slide. <laughs> it means you wasted one or two hours on the slide that you're not even going to use. So it's good to actually use low tech before you go into using any form of technology. Yeah? Uh, you, maybe outlining your thoughts in sticky notes or brainstorming. Uh, you, even you can use a brainstorming tool or maybe just sketching your, 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 your mind map or, so on, or storyboarding. I mean, if you're a bit more complicated, you probably want to do storyboarding. But I recommend always go low tech first. Maybe you're sitting in a classroom with, if you're doing a, a group presentation, you're discussing it, maybe having a whiteboard, you're discussing it. You, you're basically framing the skeleton first before you put the flesh. If, as long as you get the skeleton right, designing content becomes easy. But a lot of people, they, they start developing the, the flesh and then there's no skeleton, it just keeps on collapsing. And that takes up a lot of time. And I've, I've been there many times, so I know. You, you get to do the technical stuff first and then you're just wasting hours and hours and hours, which could have been wasted on designing a great story or a great presentation. Eh? And then it's good to, if you have a lot of reusable content, uh, resources, reference, and diagrams. On you have a, an own folder which you can keep on reusing things that you want to reuse. Okay, so I'm going to cover something called Gangnia's nine events of instruction. Uh, are you familiar with Gangnia's nine events of instruction? Have you heard about Gangnia's nine events of instruction? I learned this in 2001. I was an instructional designer in 2001. That was my first job involved in e-learning, uh, and I still, in my mind, I don't talk about nine events, but I still use it until today. It's still in my mind when I design content. Uh, presentation. I like it. I don't use all the nine steps. You don't have to follow it, but it's a very good starting point, reference point to make sure that your presentation really engages, uh, at least engages them. Whether the, the content is simplified, that's a challenge, but at least you, you gain the attention and you, you and that, that part is gotten taken care of. And it's a flow. It's a good flow. And you cover the introduction, body, and, and conclusion. Okay. So not many people have heard about it. Uh, some yes. So, so I want to ask you, what is the first thing in Forget about Gangnam. The first thing you want to do with a student or a participant, what is the first thing you want to do? The most important today, especially today, we have so many distractions. What is the first thing you want to do? Okay. Uh, Jasu, uh, how, how to... Jaisu, Jaisu, yeah. Grab their attention. Yes. So that's the first thing you want to do. Huh? You want to grab their attention. <laughs> Okay, know your audience, yeah, definitely. That, that's before, I'm talking about in the presentation, before you design the presentation, it's good to know the audience, yes. That's definitely good. But when you have the presentation itself, Gangnes 9 ms instruction is basically on the presentation flow. Of course, you need to do analysis before and so understand the audience and level, but when you talk about the presentation flow, Gangnes 9 instruction is, to me, is the simp uh, I like it very much. The first thing you need to do is gain attention. Because a lot of people, what they do is, they present the learning outcomes first, and then they try to gain attention. Like they have the in the slides, students are not even there. So in other words, you, it's very good to uh, gain the attention first before you go into talking about the slides and so on. Okay, and once you present the learning outcomes, you can do it in your presentation. Or sometimes you don't do it; you just do it outside. But 
uh, then you try to stimulate recall from prior learning before you go into the core content. So maybe you can connect what you're teaching now with something they have learned before, something that they, they know. That becomes it much easier to, to learn it. And then the next step is now you start presenting the content that you want, to, the, the core new content that you want to inspire them or, or simplify something that's relevant to their learning outcomes. Huh? Uh, and then you provide guidance. To provide guidance is, is that you, sometimes you, you present the content one way I'm gonna go through in detail now, just summarizing quickly first. Uh, then you need to uh, share the content in a different way to make them understand. Sometimes you just have a bullet form, they don't understand, but then you show it in a case study and then they understand. In other words, it's good to provide content in different formats, to hopefully within the different formats, they will they'll really understand it. And then number seven is to provide learning activities. Now, don't get fooled that you have to provide learning activities at number six. You can do learning activities throughout, but it's just reminding you that you need to have learning activities in your e-learning content. There has to be some activities to check whether they have understood or check whether they know the skill and so on. And then the next one is to provide feedback. I think e uh, online learning is very good to provide feedback for closed end questions like multiple choice and so on. But open ended is a bit more challenging. There are some technology now that allows you to write text and they have automated artificial intelligence that answers your question. But we still need that human touch feedback is still very much required. So that's a bit more challenge. How do you do that online in, in an efficient and effective way? Eh? And then assess, you need to assess the learning. Assessment again can happen throughout, formative or summative, but it's just a reminder when you talk about Gangnis, nine and session, you have to have some form assessment in your content. And of course, finally, uh, you need to have a, a recap, a summary, a conclusion uh, to enhance the retention and transfer. And also, which is often is additional resources. Now they have learned something, they have recapped, but what about sharing some other research for those who are excited to learn even beyond what is the topic? Uh, so this is the Gangnis nine event instruction, which we, I will spend another about 30 minutes on because I think it's very powerful. And we're going to discuss this together, how to make it, because I'm sure I can learn from you and you can learn from me and make it. So uh, we talked about gain attention. So, oh, okay. So you can see here, we talked about that. So these are some of the things we already talked about. Again, how do you gain the student's attention? That's number one. We have to do that. And I think that's, uh, it's more challenging than ever today. I mean, even when you're online, uh, okay, I, since you're here, we are doing a webinar. How would you gain somebody's attention online? Okay, they're there, you see the video, but they might be on another screen. How do you gain people's attention in a webinar? Maybe you can share in the chat box. How would you gain somebody's attention? You're having a class, maybe you have 100 people, 50 people, I got now 40 maybe. How do I gain their attention straight away to make sure that they're on board? Any tips or tricks that you use? Okay, thank you, Walla, for uh, commenting on the model. Yeah, I didn't invent this, okay. Okay, include them through interactive activities, says Jaisu, okay. Uh, keep referring to them randomly. Yes, Sylvanus, I'm referring to Sylvanus. Sylvanus, okay. Mal, animated song. Yeah, I'm not very good at singing. So, yeah, animated song, yeah, why not? Okay, <laughs> what else? Let them know that I'll be calling on them anytime. Yeah, this is very good. You have, uh, there's actually tools for random, random uh, questioning of people. But actually just going to the chat board and picking a person and just asking him will keep people attentive because they, be, they don't want to be caught off guard. Huh? So that's very good. Randomly checking, okay. Could crack a joke, okay. I call it Faisi Stan. Faisi Stan. Faisi. I call it Faisi. Faisi, Faisi, Faisi yeah? Could crack a joke, okay. Lenga says, let them know that I will be called. Okay, we talked about that, okay. So there are many things we can do, okay. But the most important thing is that we have in our mind that we need to gain their attention. We, we can't assume that they are attending to us, okay. Uh, call them by first names, okay? Uh, uh, Jai said, well, quick pair interaction helps up, okay? What else? Okay, so you you, all you, I'm sure all of you are doing that, but it's, there's always new ways to do it because sometimes we think we're doing really great and then we realize we have a new group that is, is all, all new challenges, so on, okay? Bucky, okay, I'll call you Bucky, okay, thank you, sorry. Okay, uh, I do, okay. Bucky, I'll just call you Bucky, very nice, okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, today we're talking about PowerPoint, but I'm not saying PowerPoint is the best tool. Uh, I just chose PowerPoint because I know it. I've been using it for 15 years and I felt I've trained so many people using PowerPoint and I feel that most people don't know how to use PowerPoint to a, a level that they could be using it because most people know how to use it. But they, I mean, they, they know the features in PowerPoint. I mean, they know the tool, but they don't really know to use it in a, in a creative way because they've got a lot of features that are, they probably don't know. So there are all the presentation tools. You have PowerPoint, of course, you have Keynote. If you ask anybody in Apple, they say Keynote is better than PowerPoint. 
Uh, they got Prezi now. Not so many people are using Prezi as far as I know, but it was very popular for a while. TED Talks is very much based on Prezi. Prezi a lot of Prezi presentations in TED Talks. Uh, you have Google. You got Heiko. They, they got so many tools. Canva now. If you ask young people, they use a lot of Canva, especially to do posters and so on. And besides that, you have engagement tools. We talk about Mentimeter. There's so many tools. All these tools, most of these tools here I've used, I've trained people on. Uh, when I started off uh, nearly more than 10 years ago using Poll Everywhere, which is, is, was a very good tool, uh, which is something like Mentimeter, but has, uh, is an old version of it. Uh, we have uh, Kahoot. Uh, when I was at the medical university for seven years, Kahoot became the most popular tool. It's a gamified way. You, you gamify quizzes and so on. So there's a lot of tools we can use, which I'm not going to cover today, but I'm just saying that to engage the students, whether in a webinar or in your e-learning content or in a face-to-face -face session, uh, there's a lot of tools. We're very, we're very blessed. Uh, and these tools, what they do is they engage people's handphone because that's the number one tool that people are, are going to distract you. I mean, get distracted with their handphone. But these tools kind of conquer the handphone and say, hey, I got a question here. So these tools are very good to engage, except Plickers. Plickers, these Plickers here, they used, uh, instead of handphone, because not everybody has a phone, right? So what you do is, this, if, if, you, if you have a class, classroom uh, or students that don't have handphones, Plickers is very powerful, because what it does is, I don't have it here now, but it, it's a QR code. So you answer through pictures and QR codes. So you can just raise the QR code and, and, and people, and the, 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 the teacher scans it with their phone and they get the data straight in live uh, streaming of the results. So that's a, there's a lot of tools, but today is, today's focus is PowerPoint, okay? And also if you want to develop quick videos for animation for attention grabbers, there's a lot of tools also. Uh, I, know, I remember when I was teaching it effectively a few years back, Powtoon was very popular, uh, Videoscribe, but Videoscribe is most commercial now. Uh, there's so many tools out there, okay? Uh, so, so don't be, uh, but these are tools to keep in mind that they are there. Uh, so if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're struggling with PowerPoint, you don't like PowerPoint, there are other tools to use. But my reason for actually selecting PowerPoint today is, if you talk about, if you want to design your own content, your own visuals, uh, PowerPoint is better than all these tools. These tools will provide you templates, they will provide you all this, but they're limited to the clip part and the templates. And, and if you don't use the commercial version, you're limited to very, it's not much to play around with. And it's easy when you have simple content, but when you have more complex contents in engineering, in biology, in medicine, in physics, you realize you still have to design your own visuals. And that's where PowerPoint can play, a, as far as my experience, can play an easier role. Because it's, it, I'm not saying it's the most powerful tool to create visuals, but it's a very easy tool. The learning curve is very short and steep, so you can learn it very fast. Uh, and besides video tools, you have digital drawing tools. Uh, if you're doing a webinar, you might not want to use the whiteboard on Zoom. There's a lot of tools. I did a, a survey in my group. Uh, I have a group of 2,500 people, but not everyone participate. But actually, they found they, they prefer Jamboard, which is uh, Google. So if you want to have a whiteboard, digital whiteboard, you want to create e-learning content where you, you visualize and draw, uh, they found Jamboard is very powerful. Because uh, I think this is something I'm not doing today, but I would love to do another webinar, is teach you how to draw uh, basic. Because if you can draw and you have a powerful voice, you, you are unbreakable. I mean, you can develop e-learning content so easily. You can even just have a normal whiteboard there and you can visualize some of the best e-learning content I've said. It's just using a chalk or a marker pen with a whiteboard and you have a nice uh, camera and getting good audio and you're just illustrating live. Because it's, it's, to me, it's nothing more powerful when the expert is connecting with the, 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 the tools to visualize. Huh? It's really powerful. Uh, it's, it's like Khan Academy on steroids. Uh, if you can do it. so, but the point is, a lot of people now, because of technology, they stop drawing, and and they, when they stop drawing, they're not they're not comf confident in visualizing and illustrating and so on. But if you can do that, it's it's really powerful. Okay, so that was number two. We need to gain attention. Number two in Gangnam's nine of instruction is how to present learning outcomes. Okay, or learning objectives. Uh, I'm not sure what you call it in your. Okay, so why we're here. I just want to ask you, how do you present your learning outcomes to your students? Do you present it in your content or you just have it in the, the, the platform or you have it on a separate piece of paper? Uh, what creative ways do you use your learning outcomes? As Because learning outcomes is a very powerful learning tool if students know how to use it and if they have designed, well designed. So do you have any strategies to ensure that students actually read the learning outcomes and understand them and apply them to their learning process? Okay, well, seeing here, uh, the Kahoot, yeah, the two people here likes Lucy and uh, Feke likes uh, Kahoot, yeah. Because this is one I, I discussed. I went through master's and bachelor never looking at a learning outcome. In my, I never looked at learning outcomes. Yeah. And if I'd done it, I probably would have done even better because uh, it's, it's a very powerful learning tool if you know how to use them. 
Okay. Uh, Jaiso, you include them in the in the outline, okay, of my lecture. Lenga, use it in the course of the outline and the beginning of each session. Uh, uh, and you probably use Bloom's taxonomy. I think I think in Malaysia and Asia we use a lot of Bloom's taxonomy. Like we have the six levels of Bloom's taxonomy. It must be the highest level. I know now they have the new Bloom's taxonomy and so on. But I'm not going to go into that today. Okay. Uh, okay. So basically in the beginning and recapping the session, okay. Tony, you need an activity that makes the core outcomes live, a live issue. Very great, 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 yes. If you can encode that in your activity so the learning outcomes, so they, they understand the income and also if they can apply it, it'll, it'll be great, yes. Okay. So one of the things that, that I, I, I played around with, but not many people tried to follow my way was uh, the way, if you write learning outcomes like this, at the end of this topic, you will be able to blah, 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 blah. This is why they call instruction. It's like telling you, you must be able to do this, this. Uh, th there's a way actually you, you can switch it, okay? Uh, uh, you, can, you can write the, why not write the learning outcomes, the same learning outcomes in the form of questions. Uh, two things is good why, when you do that. First, if you write the learning outcome in the form of a question, you can actually find out whether your learning outcome actually makes sense. Is it, is it measurable? Because uh, sometimes it looks measurable, but when you're asking a question, does it make sense? Uh, so, so how many of you actually uh, convert your learning outcomes into questions? This is just one alternative. Because uh, students understand questions. When you talk about exams, they understand questions. But learning outcomes, the way it's constructed is very, you be able to, they don't see the relevance. But when it's constructed as a question, they straight away see the relevance, okay? Uh, so this is what, that's one strategy, actually convert them. You twist them the same, you, you're actually asking the same, but just reformulating in the form of a question, okay? So maybe that's something that you want to explore uh, on how to do that. Okay, so Lucy, I like that. So, and actually it's very good to test yourself because something you think your learning outcome is very easy to understand, but when you form it in the form of a question, you say, okay, this does not make sense. This is too generic or maybe this is too specific. It's too easy. So actually when you start forming in a question, uh, okay. Okay, uh, Jaisu says action verbs. Yeah, we, we have that. I think I have that next slide uh, and following, okay. Uh, okay, okay. So but that's, I'm just sharing a quick way that you can also form the form of, uh, question okay so here we have the verbs we talked about the verbs use measurable action verbs of course uh, and then you have I, the new Bloom's taxonomy is actually the old one was evaluated now it's about innovation with the era of innovation and creativity so we want to the students to be more innovative so we usually now with the new Bloom's taxonomy I don't it's not very new but it's create uh, uh, to innovate to design and so on and evaluate and lesson so if they, they, something called I don't have it in the slides here it's something called hot high order thinking skills and low order so most people apply high order thinking skills is from create to apply and then lower order is understanding and remembering is, is the lower order thinking skills. So you want to have, of course, everything, but ideally you want to have more and more activities and content exploring this part. This is what you want them to get. Uh, it's in higher education, it's all about the why and how, you know, not what, when, where, okay, fine. But you want students to understand why is it like that? And how can I apply that in different ways? How do I do it? So the how and why's are really the power of universities. If, if your university or the, your course or your content is not exploring the why's and the how's and what ifs and uh, then what, then that, that, uh, it, it's, it's, to me, it's not so exciting. It's, it, ideally, you should be exploring more of that. That's where we want to develop the student's mind to a higher level. Eh? Okay, so we talked about attention, learning outcomes, and then recall prior knowledge. So in the chat box now again, uh, what, do you, what kind of activities do you do to encourage students to recall prior knowledge? Is there any activities you do that, to check whether students actually know this? Sometimes they know the content already. How do you check? Do you, do you have any strategies on that? Okay. Prior knowledge, huh? That's good. Cool. Hey. Okay. Okay, so pre-reading task, okay. But that's, that. Uh, as Jason said, giving them task is fine, but how do we know they've done it? Huh? Ask them questions, okay? Call us, ask them questions. Great, okay. What else? Anything else? There are many things we can do. There's no right and wrong, but we, it's good to know, we know what you know. Like even here, I want to know more what you know about PowerPoint. Class activities, okay, great, okay. So let's look at some of the things that you can do. 
associating new information with prior knowledge to facilitate the learning process. What are techniques to stimulate it? Okay, pre-test, we talked about that, we just mentioned that questions before. Brainstorm ideas. When you start brainstorming ideas around the topic, you start realizing whether they know the subject matter and so on. Uh, share related experiences. Say, are we talking about, uh, what are we talking? Uh, we're talking about uh, creativity, right? So then we can check whether they, what experience they have in creativity. So say that we're talking about a technique like uh, six thinking hats, and then we can check, just ask them, have you used six thinking hats? Or what do you think about it? And then so we can actually share related experiences. Anticipate what's next, problem solving, discuss what they know, which is straightforward, use variety of media. So these are some of the things that we can, techniques we can use to stimulate recall. Okay, so now we have, we have, we have gained attention, we have the learning outcomes, uh, we, we, if there's something that relates, sometimes it's totally new information, but if it's not, we can recall to past experience so we know, so they can relate it, they can connect it, and when they can connect it, it's more easy to understand, remember? Now it's time to present the new content, okay? So, and this is uh, the biggest challenge, is, is chunking and organizing content, okay? In a meaningful way, because one of the problems that uh, I've had, because uh, I've trained more than a thousand academics, professors, doctors, is that we want to put everything into the slide. It's become so crowded. We, we cannot extract what is important. And then the student, when they see all these uh, hundreds of words in the slide, they also struggle even more to find the extract. So it's very important to be chunking and organizing content. So this is something uh, in a meaningful way. Okay. So I have a bit fun here. So it helps to present the information in a way that makes it easy for the audience learners to understand and remember. I think this there's two things here. You want to remember, you want to understand. You can remember but not understand, and you can understand and not remember. That's, even, that's, that's terrible also because you, sit, you have a situation, you're a doctor, you remember, but you, I mean, you, you understand, but you can't remember what the best medicine to use. So remembering and understanding goes together. You need to do both. Uh, it's not good enough to remember. It's not also not just good to understand because you, you must be able to remember and apply it at the situation, at the context that needed. it. And that's because I went to medical university. So medical university is very important as a doctor at this situation. If you're talking about like the person is dying there and he needs CPR, it's like, I uh, understand CPR, but I can't remember the steps. You know? So you need to, these things, uh, you need to have both uh, in, in many situations. So it's good to know both to remember and understand, okay? I put bros at that to chop it, okay? So, so how many of you, I just want to ask you, Tsunbi here now, are you good at chunking content or not? Chunking content, do you know what chunking content is or not? Are you good at chunking content? Okay, I'm too wordy. Nomsa says I'm too wordy. Yeah, it's not easy. Chunking content is not easy. Extracting what is important, okay? Chunking content is basically extracting, uh, breaking it into pieces. It's like a pizza. I've, I have a slide on this, but I didn't, a drawing actually on this. I, maybe I can share it later in the, in the on, online later. Is that, just imagine a pizza, okay? How would you want to eat the pizza? Uh, if it's not cut into pieces, you take the whole pizza in your mouth, you're probably going to warm it or you're probably going to get a stomach cake or you're going to, it's not going to be possible. So in other words, you need to cut the pizza into pieces and then eat slow one by one. And this is the same principle in content. You can't just stuff everything in there. You need to chunk it up nicely so it becomes digestible for the brain to, to comprehend. Okay. Yeah, so in other words, Nomsa says breaking the content into smaller pieces, chunks, meaningful chunks. Yeah, great. Okay. So let's look at some examples. Uh, is this a good example here? Do you like this slide? Actually, this slide is not so bad. It's got bullets. I've seen slides that it looks like that. There's not, not even one bullet. <laughs> uh, eating the elephant, small, small. Okay. Uh, okay. So is this a good slide? <laughs> it's too much. Info. So I can, I'm just going to show an example of the same slide uh, presented in a different way. Yeah? So let's look at This is the same slide. Okay, this is the same slide again, but it's chunked up. So actually, this one has all the content, but it's chunked up into three frames. So, so at least you know the, the three uh, subcategories and then the, the minus. At least you get, you can see some, it's, it's the, the skeleton is there. Is it good or not? Uh, this is another way of presenting it. And this is another, way. I'm not saying which one is best, but of course the number, number three one is, is simplified in terms of very little content, but it, it might not be understandable for people that don't know the subject matter. So this is the challenge. But when you're doing e-learning content, if you're explaining it, uh, you don't have to have too much of the text. 
maybe you want to have it in a, in a text document, but in your PowerPoint, you don't have to show everything because you're presenting it in, in, in your audio. Okay, so these are just some examples of chunking, okay? When you talk about TED Talks, uh, I'm sure everybody of you watch TED Talks, right? Uh, okay, Fariza said she likes number two here. There's no right and wrong, okay? I just wanted to talk about chunking. Eh? Uh, this is a magic number. If you talk about, if you go to any presentation guru, guru, any presentation, they always talk about the rule of three. Okay, sometimes it's nearly impossible to apply, but the rule of three is to keep things, the magic number in presentation is three. Our memory now is only up to four items in the latest research. So three is very good, comfortable research. So the magic number of three. So if you ask the gurus, they always have this three. So if you have like, if you're giving a 15 minute talk, like I'm not gonna break it into three main categories and then three. So I'm not saying this is a, it's a golden rule, but it's a, it's a good reference, especially if you're giving a short uh, micro learning content and so on. Uh, if it's possible. So you can see here, let me just show you that. So if you're talking about presentation flow, you usually have an opening, you have a body and you have a closing. And then you can have a sub of threes. So remember we talked about the star moment, you have the star moment, it can come anyway actually, because that's the most memorable thing in your presentation, but I just put it in the beginning. You have the key message, uh, and this is, this is talking about TED Talks. This is the presentation flow for most TED Talks. It's good to know, because you can always adapt it to your teaching and learning. And then you have the overview, okay? The key message, overview, overview, and the key message. But usually you have the key message and then overview. Like usually TED Talks is about changing the world or something. You have this idea that can change the world. And then like the star moment, remember the star moment of Bill Gates was? The mosquitoes, right? He let go of the mosquitoes. He said it was malaria and people were like, oh no. Uh, so that was a star moment, unforgettable moment, okay? And then you have, now that you have got the overview and now we come to the body, that's when you share the main ideas, the main content. And then you go to, the evidence, if, you, if you're talking about research, you want to present the evidence. I have some ideas, but of course, where's your evidence? So you have to present the evidence and then maybe the supporting ideas to the evidence. And that's your body. And then you have your closing, you recap, and then you emphasize your key message or the key conclusion. This is for TED Talks. You might, if you're teaching and learning, it's probably just gonna end up a recap and summary. Uh, and then uh, you call to action if, if it's something that you want to change the world or your motivation talk and so on. And of course, TED Talks don't have this, but you're, as educationists, you have to have Q&A. You want to have the Q&A. So this is actually a framework. It's a basic framework. Uh, you can go to any presentation group. They'll have uh, something similar, the rule of three. Of course, they'll ha have different flavor words and all that, but this is basically the core. And I, I always, why I'm showing this is, I'm not saying it's always applicable teaching and learning, but it's good to have as a reference point. Uh, we'll get back to TED Talks later because I think it's a, TED Talks is a very good reference to, if you want to inspire people. If you want to inspire people, it's a good reference. Maybe not in terms of instructional design, but if you want to engage and inspire, TED Talks is a very good reference point. Huh? So this is also very important, contrast. Uh, when you want to present, make sure you have good contrast on your content, uh, your slide. So in other words, your text and background should always have a big contrast. Uh, in, in, in countries where students print out, uh, people still print out materials, if you're printing out materials, the best always to have a white background because that saves ink. Uh, it, it, white background and then strong color for text. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily the best design, but in terms of saving ink, if people are printing out your content, to save ink, it's always best to have a white background because then it's not using any ink, you're just using ink for the text and the visuals, okay? Uh, okay, uh, I'm just gonna do it. So this is just an example of bad contrast and good contrast. And if you're colorblind, it's even worse, huh? so it's, but the contrast is very important. So when you design, and also avoid busy templates. Uh, you can look at here, this template here. Uh, if I, it looks nice, right? But when you start, well, how do I read this text? <laughs> you want to avoid busy templates. And size matters. What do you want things to stand out, okay? When you look at this slide, what is standing out here? Say that I wanted the yellow ball to stand out, and I put yes. So of course, yes is standing out. So then in other words, I should make the ball bigger, the yellow ball bigger. So in other words, what you want to stand out should stand out. Uh, size matters in, in terms of presentations. It can be, it doesn't have to be size and size, it can be also color, it can be uh, the, the, the thickness of the line, there's many of them, but this is just one example. Eh? And also font type, what kind of font type do you want? Uh, they say for printing serif, but for e-learning content, sans serif, just, just, just show you some examples. Uh, okay, sans serif is like this, this is sans serif. Sans serif has a lot of edges on the, on the you can see here, but uh, serif, or sans serif uses, you don't see those have the edit. It's, it's easier to read online. But it was very interesting. I presented this to people that print a lot and they said, serif, uh, let me just say, I always get to, okay. Serif is better for printing, but sans serif is better for e-learning content. And examples of good 
uh, recommended e-learning text uh, font types is Verdana, Impact, Arial, Calibri. I'm using Calibri here, mostly Calibri. Okay, these are just examples. Okay, I will skip this slide, Master. So these are some of the things that in terms of presenting your content, your new content, uh, once you present your new content, you need probably to present it a few times in different ways. You, maybe you present the principles and then you have the case studies and so on. So you need to present your content in, in different ways. Huh? I'm just going to cover this and we get back to the chat. Huh? So there's some, there are many ways. I just showed you something. Mnemonics is, I, I, I went from a B to a, a Dean's list or A's just using acronyms and, and mind maps. Uh, and acronyms is very helpful uh, if it can be done. Sometimes it's helpful. Like this one example here, you want the person to remember the the, all the planets in a, on our planetary system. And you just remember my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas. And if you remember that, and you just, you can write the first letter of each represents one of the planets, okay? So you can have here. So this is uh, an easy C. M for Mercury, B for Venus, E for Earth, M for Mars. If just by remembering this, most likely if, with a few tries, you remember all nine planets in the solar system. So this is just an example of acronyms can be very powerful. And this is, it could be, the acronym can just be a word, just one word. Here's a sentence, the first letter. It could just be one word. Like uh, in e-learning, you have the ADDIE, which is uh, Analysis, uh, Design, Development, Implementation, Evaluation. This is another example. This is just the letters. Or you can have a sentence. Sometimes it's better to just use the letters. But if it's not memorable, maybe you create a sentence. So there's two ways of doing it eh? uh, in terms of acronyms uh, and so on. It's not called acronyms. What is it called? It's, I can't remember the word for it. Uh, mind maps is another useful way to present the content in a different way. Stories and in education, talk about case studies. Uh, and and then, uh, unfortunately, a lot of students, when they go to PowerPoint, which is probably PowerPoint, they memorize all the points. But actually, all the magic is in the stories, in the case studies. And they don't. And a lot of times, students don't spend time on it because they don't think it's important. It's not important for the exam. But what people remember when they graduate is going to be the stories more than the... We are genetically engineered to remember stories more than bullets. Uh, this is some, bullets is something we invented later. So I think it's very important to encourage students to really go through those case studies and stories and, and remember them. And they're very helpful. Even when you start working, if you become a leader, you want to relate to stories. So... This, and it's more memorable. So, but the thing is, a lot of times we focus too much on the bullets, but the stories. The, uh, I have my, oh, I quote myself here: "Bullets sticks for exams, stories stick for life." Okay, okay. So, I've gone a bit fast because I, I, I'm keeping trying to keep the time. I promised only one hour. We're about to cover. Okay. Any questions until now uh, of the things we have covered? Anything? Okay, Alfred says, my very eyes may just see under nine plant. <laughs> okay, very nice. <laughs> uh, anybody wants to share until now? Any questions until now? We use the chat book for now because it, it's a bit more efficient. Uh, maybe when halfway, you can give the mic. When we're halfway, uh, we're soon halfway in terms of the design. I don't know how long the lag is. Eh? When I say something, I think the lag is at about 10 to 15 seconds because I notice it comes about one minute after I say, I talk, then the, the, the points come. Uh, of course, you need some time to write uh, your points. Okay, here, people like Ellery, Ariel, Kelly. Okay, it's got your one new message here. We are thinking. Irene is we're thinking. Okay, think a lot. Uh, you can see here, going back to the chat, readability. Eh? Kuala says readability is very important. Okay, Ariel. Okay, go on, message here. Okay, can you please share any ideas of effective rubrics for assessing uh, power of point, uh, PowerPoint presentation? Uh, I have to go look back. There's a lot of rubrics. Actually, you can just Google it because most of them are straightforward. Uh, uh, yeah, but I have to look back on that on rubrics on presentation. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, but you can say you can create your own rubric, uh, or you can just refer to uh, gurus and presentation. You usually have five uh, criteria for a great. It has to be, uh, it has to be simple, simple clarity, simple. Uh, the creative, where's the creativity? Uh, are you applying uh, chunking? You know, and those kind of you can you can design your own actually. Uh, any model apart from Gangnis that is also effective as Gangnis. Uh, uh, okay, I'm talking about presentation flow. Gangnis. There are other models on how to before the design. Uh, there's something called action mapping. Because uh, today, only two hours. Uh, when I do a full day workshop, I cover different uh, uh, methods. Uh, but today, since it's only two hours, I'm actually just covering Ganges. But there's something called action mapping. Uh, 
uh, I, I don't want to talk too much about it, but you can Google action mapping. Uh, it's very powerful. So it helps you to find out what you need to. So in other words, it, it twists around. It starts with learning outcomes. Uh, and then what do students, students need to learn, the skills? And then what kind of content is required for them to learn the skill and all the, 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 the thinking? And then, so you actually don't, they don't focus on content all. It's the last thing they focus on. A lot of people, they start with the content. Okay. Okay. We've got some questions here. Okay. Uh, Bella says, uh, may seven by seven word guide horizontally and vertically make the PowerPoint good. May seven by seven words guide. I, I don't know. It depends. It depends. Uh, it depends. It really depends. If you're giving, if the PowerPoint, if you're giving a presentation to a large audience, you want to have not so many words on your presentation slides because it's difficult to see and it's difficult to comprehend. But if you're doing e-learning content, you can have actually more content on the slides. Because they're close to the screen, they can actually see. And of course, yeah. So it, it's it's very it's not one way or another way. But I'm sure the seven by seven word guide was made for a purpose. So I'm sure it, it, it will it will make the PowerPoint better than maybe that what what you had before. Okay, uh, you mean action mapping? Yes, I mean action mapping. Uh, actually, later maybe I'll share open up another slide I have on action mapping. We can look at it a bit later if we have time. But if not, we can get back to it later. Uh, Irene promised me to give one more presentation later than one month's time. So when I do the drawing, I can look at some instructional models uh, to help you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So talk about activities and feedback. Oh, we're going through another uh, six or five stages. You also have to have activities. Uh, I, I'm sure you've seen this before. Teaching others, attention span. I mean, retention is 90. I try to hide this because this, this research is, is a bit mythical but but what I feel is true is yes teaching others is one of the best way to check whether you learn and to learn something like I'm teaching you is to teach others and also teach yourself sometimes you don't understand you go to the whiteboard and you start teaching yourself and then sometimes you realize I don't understand or understand so the, the so teaching others and teaching yourself is very powerful techniques to improve the way you learn practice by doing discussion groups demonstration uh, I think in research done in MIT showed that the, the, the most of uh, successful students are those who study in groups. Uh, of course, it's not just studying groups. You find people that are passionate about your learning and a good dynamic group. Uh, because sometimes just studying groups doesn't make sense if there's nobody studying in the group. Uh, uh, so these are some of the techniques that to engage learners to learn. And so from passive to active, uh, student engagement. Uh. Somebody was mentioning rubrics. Yes, when you talk about assessment, I think we're moving into the era now that multiple choice now is okay, fine for understanding, but this is not what brings you to level to become more innovative, creative, and, and uh, you need to look at, uh, I think the most powerful tool today is, is, the, is encouraging teachers and students to design their, uh, to share and, or at least capture their e-portfolio, whatever they're doing assignments, projects, uh, uh, collate it and, and make it available. Because this is, if, 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 if I was working for Google and I'm hiring people, uh, I mean, you might get straight A's, that's fine, you get the interview, but I want to see what you have created, what kind of ideas you have. And, I'm not, and you're not going to see that through the exams, you're going to see but in the projects, the assignments they've done, the videos they've done, the, the, the engineering, the, the things they've created, you know, and so on. So I think this idea that you keep on collating and designing students, building up the e-portfolio, especially in university, and, and having that as a reference point for people to uh, people that are interested to work with you, I think that's very powerful. So, so that we should encourage students to design their own e-portfolio. E Some people just have a blog, but e-portfolio can be anything, just a Google Drive folder. You're collecting it. You're collecting your items that you created. It's not something just goes to waste for assignment. It's something that it becomes part of you even later as, as, you, as you go on to work. Rubrics is very powerful. The only thing with rubrics is it can stifle creativity. Because uh, when you have a rubric, if it's too, too specific, uh, this workshop is not about rubrics, but just sharing with you from my experience. If the rubric is too specific. You, 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 the, mind, the student's mind is just following the rubric and, and, and it might stifle creativity. So even when you design rubrics, it might be helpful to assess, to be very structured, but it might also kill creativity. So this is a challenge when you design a rubric. If, it's, if it's creativity is involved, you want to find ways the rubric is not guiding the students too much so they, they're not being so creative in, in the approach. Yeah? Peer assessment is useful. Uh, but uh, as my, my brother used to say, I didn't do much peer assessment because I studied in Norway and that time not, not so much. Uh, and uh, even in UIA, I studied in Malaysia, my bachelor's and master's. Uh, we didn't do much peer assessment. But peer assessment, knowing students, uh, a lot of them game it. 
uh, they try to game it. They work together to make sure everybody does well in the, in the peer assessment. So that's one of the things that you have to deal with. If you know how to do it, it's fine. If you don't know, because uh, my, my brother used to always game it. He worked, he studied in Australia and they said when they had peer assessment, they find ways to game it. So this is one of the challenges with peer assessment uh, to get the honest feedback and, and make sure that everything is well. And then learning analytics, which is technology to provide feedback from when they're online, you know, when they're online, how much they're online, the statistics from the quizzes and so on. So, but what I'm trying to say is when you design content, when you design e-learning experiences, you need to have ways to assess the students. Huh? And then the final aspect of Gangnes Dynamics instruction is to summarize, conclude, uh, recap, and also provide additional resources and maybe link them to a discussion for the next week and you have a link, uh, a link to assignments, quizzes, and simulation. So just to recap, uh, this is the lecture format and now we're going to go into the uh, real looking at the PowerPoint itself. So this is basically a summary. So I recommend if you want to tweak, because I'm not going to make necessarily the slides available, take a screenshot of this, this slide. This is very useful slide, because this actually summarizes what we've talk, been talking for the last 45 minutes. It summarizes everything is here. Okay, in, in general, in the, in the summary. Uh, so Gangnes 9 events of instruction, if you look on the left side here, from introduction, content assessment summary, is, is this, this nine events of instruction. But what, keep in mind, uh, gaining attention is important to do in the beginning, informing learning is important, but this, provide learning activities, provide feedback, assess learning, doesn't have to come at the end. It can come throughout. There's something that should come throughout uh, and so on, okay? And here are some of the activities that you can do within the different events of Agnes nine learning uh, events or events of instruction. So do you have any questions about Gangnes nine events of instruction? I liked it, I learned it in 2001 already. Uh, I don't like refer to it, but it always reminds me, I must gain attention, I must have some assessment, I must recap, I must have activity. So it just always reminds me, whatever I do in, 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 in content development or designing learning experiences, I always have uh, this Gangnes nine events of instruction always reminds me of the core things that needs to, must be in there, a minimum. Uh, okay, any questions? Can I, I'm just gonna go through the chat, okay. Uh, the recording will be available for, yeah, uh, the, the recording will be available. Uh, as for the presentation slides, I need to chuck, because this, uh, I, I'll make some, not everything available, because I have a lot of activities so that spoils the, uh, but I can make the course slides available, yes, the course slides I can make available later, no problem. I'll make it away to Irene and then she can share it. Because I've stopped using slide share, no, especially slide share. I used to stay for 10 years and then suddenly they cut my account. So I, it really frustrates me. So maybe I'll share, just share it on Google Drive. Huh? Okay, so this is about uh, Gangnes nine events instruction. Do you have any questions regarding, regarding it? It's not the only, but I love it in terms of presentation flow. Gangnes nine events instruction is a good reference model. Huh? Okay, okay, okay. So can we, t do you want to take a fi uh, five minute or three minute break just to breathe uh, and then uh, we, we go into looking more about PowerPoint. Huh? How to design awesome graphics in PowerPoint. Just share some of the things, some, some of the things that you might not know. Okay, so I'm just gonna, uh, for two, three minutes, I'm not gonna say so much. You can put in some questions in the chat box to let you breathe. Because I know I can go on for six, because I have something go on for four or five hours, but I do take breaks, but uh, I know people can get exhausted, so yeah. So I'll be here. Uh, I think a, br uh, a breather is good for some Kenyan coffee. <laughs> yeah, I'm fasting, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm breaking fast in two hours. I got two more hours to oh. go. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, but I, um, while, while it's a break, I just want to say thank you very much, uh, uh, Emerge Africa, for inviting me and also for Jakob uh, Pedersen and, of course, Dr. Ahmad and you. Thank you very much. Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad, thank you very much for inviting me and I really appreciate it uh, to be in this uh, <laughs> group to share my stuff. <laughs> and also connect with new people. It's very good, very good. Thank you very much. Someone is asking how long it's going to be. So we are going to be here for another half an hour or one hour. Um, uh, we're going to be, uh, okay. my target, as I said, two hours. So I'm going to, okay. even if I'm not finished, I'm just going to cut off six o'clock. Boom. Uh, if people want to ask me questions, fine. But I'm, in terms of presentation, I'm done. I, I will always, I try to keep the time because people have schedules. They have lives also. <laughs> so I don't want to keep people long, longer than I promised. But I ask for two hours and I'll try to stick to that. Yeah, so uh, the next part we are going to is practical. So those who want to stay yeah, practical, practical yeah. part, yeah. Please, So if you have, uh, if you have, if, you, if you're running the webinar uh, and you have PowerPoint open, we can uh, do it together. 
Okay, so I'm going to look at now, uh, if you have two tools, if, if you want to do PowerPoint shape, but of course, what I'm sharing now is, is intensive. Because like even these graphics, what I'm going to share now, I usually do over three hours. On a practical workshop, I do three hours. But today is about sharing. I think the most under thing today to get from this workshop is not exactly how to do it, but you know that it exists. Once you know these features exist, you can always Google videos on how to do it. So that's my mission today is to inspire you to, to, to create your own visuals, to design great content. But exactly how to do everything is, is, is going to be difficult in two hours. But at least you know it's there. Once you know it's there, things are easy now with technology because you can always go and say, for example, I say you can remove background. You didn't know that. You, that one, you can just Google remove background. There'll be 100 videos on how to remove background in PowerPoint. So I think the most important today is to understand the available features. Uh, and then uh, maybe if you want to have another follow-up, you can just do fully hands-on. We just go one by one feature slow motion. I, I don't want to do that today because I want to, today is about opening your mind to the possibilities uh, of just, just using PowerPoint, which is a very simple tool. It's a very basic tool, but it has a lot of basic features that can enable you to do amazing stuff if you're uh, open-minded. Okay, so I'm going to start now. Um, enough break. <laughs> okay, okay. So if you look at this uh, picture here, you see all these items here. They are all, except for this one little, uh, all done 100% in PowerPoint using images and shapes, especially shapes. This stormtrooper here, you can see here, is done, I, I created 100% in PowerPoint. Uh, and that's the power of shapes we will get to. You can do the most amazing things with, uh, the most amazing thing you can do just with shapes in PowerPoint. So I just, that's why I want to, a lot of people don't know this. When I used to do this workshop, Americans, they get shocked. Uh, basic things they can do in PowerPoint, they don't have to go to Photoshop, Illustrator, or whatever tool they are, some other presentation. They can do it in PowerPoint. Of course, it's, it's not great on everything, but it can do a lot of basic stuff, especially with a blank, uh, no point. They always say PowerPoint, PowerPoint. Huh? You take away point, you get real power. But if you focus too much on the point, it becomes no point. The power goes away, it becomes no point. So you, you want to take away the point. Less point becomes more power. Less is more, they, what they say, right? Okay, so we're going to look at some of it, okay? So these are some of the things you can do. I can't cover all this stuff today in details because that takes another three hours if you want to do hands-on. But I'm going to share with you what you can do in terms of graphics. Very powerful in PowerPoint. This, this was, can be done not only in 2019, 2016, 2013, I think also. Whatever I share now can be done even maybe 2010 or so. So if you have an older version of PowerPoint, you can still do the graphics part. But we're going to cover more, but the graphics part, okay? So the first thing you can do in PowerPoint is to crop pictures. I think that's done. You can see here the icon here. Uh, uh, okay, so... You, this is inside PowerPoint. So crop fixtures is here. So if you have an image, let me just show you. If you have an image, you can just double click it and you will see the crop feature. I have to move this way, sorry. I, uh, yeah, you can see here, crop here. There's a crop button here and you can crop, okay? So now looking at this picture here, going back to this picture here, how did I create the picture below? How did I create this one? How did I create this one? Can anybody guess in the chat box? How do I create this one? Okay, crop, okay, but how do I do three? Look at this, this one is, is uh, I broke this picture into three, how do I do that? It's not hocus pocus, but I just want to make sure you know how, how that's done. Okay, cropping up is what I do, yeah. I actually duplicated the picture three times and then I cropped it different places, okay? So when you see these kind of pictures actually, uh, easy way to do is actually to, to just duplicate the picture three times and then you crop it where you want it, <laughs> okay? So that's cropping. Cropping is very basic, but that feature, if you go back to 2010, when I, I mean 2007, it was not there. I think it only came in 2010, if I'm not mistaken. So I had to go to, if you want to crop, you have to go to another tool. So cropping is already there. Very basic, it's there, okay? Uh, okay, I'll skip this one. Remove background. This is very useful. How many of you know that you can remove background in PowerPoint? Okay. So... So remove background is very useful. So say I have this picture, but I want to remove the background. Uh, you don't have to go to another tool to remove it. You can actually do it in PowerPoint. Uh, it might be sometimes tedious, but you can do it in PowerPoint, okay? You can see here, I remove the background. So it becomes like this. And then I can change the background to whatever I want. Okay, so how do I, let me just show you quickly uh, uh, that it, it can be done. 
Of course, don't be terrified if you don't know how to do this, this, this. As I said today, the most important to know today, note down, maybe you're not done, you can remove background. Once you know that, you can always find out how to do it. It's not a problem. You can just Google remove background in PowerPoint and you'll have 10, 15 videos and show you how to remove background. But I just want to show you quickly how easy it is to do. So I'm going to take the same picture. But the thing with uh, removing background, huh? uh, this picture here, I'm going to use this picture again. Huh? Let me just take a look. This picture is not easy to remove background. You know why it's not easy to remove background? Because the background is very similar to her shirt, for example, very similar to her shirt. So if I remove the background, it's not gonna be easy. But what I do is, when you wanna do anything with images, just double click the image. I double click the image, and then you see in the left, left corner here, what do you see? Remove background. I click on that, and then you see it. But see now when I remove background, only this beautiful lady is, is uh, okay, I'm not gonna comment on the ladies, uh, that's not a good idea, but only this lady is available. Uh, on the, see, the rest is not been able to see because it's, it's purple. So what I need to do is here, I go back to here, mark areas to keep. So then I have this, this is the tedious work. So some images make it very easy. Some images does not make it very easy. So you have to select the area too, to, and it can be sometimes very tedious. So it's always good to have images that have very big contrast between the background and the image that you want to, to take, uh, what do you call it? To, uh, to extract, I mean, to remove the background from. So this one's not easy, but I wanted to show you a difficult one. This is not easy, but you can keep on going. So what I, I, I'm just scratching out areas that I want to keep, and slowly I will get what I want, but it'll take longer time. Okay? You see it's coming to life now. Okay. See, your nose is still not going. Okay, your nose is not okay. Uh, so you have to click here. And when you finish, I'm, I'm not finished now, but when, once you finish, uh, you just click outside, and that's it. You got the, huh? See, now it's cropped. The background is cropped. Okay? So let's remove background. So move background, you have areas to keep. Sometimes you have mark areas to remove. So say that I want to take away this one lady. I, then I select areas to remove. See, and I'm removing her. I just want these two ladies, okay? So you have areas to keep, areas to remove. You can discard all changes or you can keep changes. So I just keep changes. So now she's not fully removed, but I could remove her if I kept on going. Okay? So this is a very powerful feature. Uh, what I used to do in... Uh, Let's just reset this. What I used to teach medical uh, doctors was was actually to what I used to teach me medical doctors was to let's go back here. I used to teach medical doctors to to fuse multiple images. Say that they had a, a surgery room, they had a surgery room, but they didn't have like the doctor. So what I got them to do is I got them to find another doctor from ER or something. And then the crop, I mean, to remove the background and put that doctor in the surgery room and maybe take another patient. I mean, it's a bit funny, but you can have a lot of fun when you start removing background. You can combine the different images. Of course, you need to worry about copyright and so on, but, but the, the possibilities are endless uh, in terms of manipulating images because sometimes you have the right surgery room, not the right doctor. Sometimes you don't have right. You can start playing around and putting things together by removing background. Huh? It's a very powerful feature. So just to indicate in the chat box, huh, how many of you use remove background? Just say yes or no. So at least I get some indication. You can do Y or N. I'm trying to get the chat. Huh? Okay, you still use. Okay, great. Never used it. So Mary, think about using it if you need it. Never used it before. So you have that remove background is already there. That's a nice feature. That's good that you haven't used it. That makes my workshop at least beneficial to one extent. <laughs> so you have remove background. You have cropping, you have remove background. Okay, great. So some people have used this, but many seem not to use it. This feature has been around for nearly, probably 10 years already, or seven years. Okay, the next one you can have is customized effects. Okay, let's just look at, look at let's, let's go back to the, I, I want to show you, it's easier if I show you. So go back here, I reset the image. So look here, customize effects. You can customize it, you double click again. Always when you want to find the features for images, just double click it, ding, ding, you get here. So. You see here on the left top corner here, I'm here now, yes, here. You see here, you have artifacts. Huh? So I can convert this picture now into a, look at the picture now, it's gonna change. It becomes a drawing, you see that? And then if you want to change, you can change the corrections. Uh, you can, okay, now my, my computer is becoming very slow. I hope it's not gonna, uh, okay. So you have corrections, you can, you can change the color. Okay, maybe I should not play so much. My computer is slowing down. I don't know why. Okay. Okay. So you can actually convert pictures into drawings and so on. You have the, it's called the artifacts here. Okay. 
Okay, you can see here you have a lot of options. I'm not going to play. Somehow my computer is slowing down, so I'm not going to show too much. But you can actually hear. Look at this, and I'll, I'll choose this one now. Look at that. Look at my picture there. <laughs> now it's no longer copyrighted because you can't even recognize. I make it blur, right? Sometimes you want to make it blur. So these artifacts is a lot of fun. Uh, you can have a lot of fun. You can actually have a guessing game with the students. You can put, take a celebrity. You can take a celebrity and use the artifacts. This one you can ask, who is this? And you can ask students to guess who this is, and then you can un undo it, you know? So there's a lot of things you can do with artifacts and have fun and gamify it and so on. But artifacts is quite powerful in PowerPoint. A lot of people don't use it. You can see here the different things you can do. It's amazing. You can make it blur. You can make it into uh, pixels. You can make it so, uh, okay? So this is artifacts, huh? So we looked at, uh, let's just go, okay? So these are the things that you can do with pictures that many people don't know, huh? Artifacts, huh? You can see here, artifacts. Artifacts, color, you can do the corrections, you can have fun, okay? So we have looked at three things, eh? you can crop, you can remove background, you can have customized effects. So these are three things that are very interesting with images, okay? So are you happy to discover that? <laughs> so these are things that most people, and it's so easy to use, you know, you can convert your picture into a drawing with one click, okay? <laughs> so that's why I'm saying when people don't understand when I say, Although I'm, I use all the other tools, PowerPoint has a lot of features. I know Keynote has this, but in general, these are features that not even people use. If they start using it, they say, oh, well, this is quite cool. Okay, we haven't started yet. Okay, so this is some of the things. Okay, let's keep it. And of course, you can compress the picture. I'm not gonna go through it, but you can actually compress the picture. Uh, one of the things that uh, is very important, okay, let me just do that. I think that's very important, the compressing pictures. If you're in medical engineering, uh, sometimes your slides comes up to hundreds and hundreds of megabytes. Medical, they, they use uh, perfect images. If you're doing, if you use perfect images, sometimes one image can weigh four to five megabytes, 10 megabytes. And if you have 10 images, already your slides are gonna be uh, 100 megabytes. And you don't want to end up your slides being, especially if you upload to the local LMS, if you're using Moodle, the whole LMS, not LMS, your, your, your browser might crash and students get frustrated. Down. So being able to compress your images is very important. And when you compress your images, it does not make much of a difference unless you're presenting it on a big screen. If you're presenting for students to study, if they're on the computer screen, it does not make much difference. Let me just reset this picture here. Okay, I just want to reset this picture. So how do you compress? Again, double click. And you can see here in the corner here, there is compressed image. You see that? Compressed pictures. Okay, not image. Compressed pictures. You click on it. So select here. You see here, there are two options here. Apply only to this picture. Delete a crop. And you can choose here. So this picture is already compressed already. But if I were to unselect this one, this is really cool. Huh? But don't do this. Uh, okay. If you're going to do this, always duplicate your presentation. Because once you have crop, compressed your presentations, uh, uh, your pictures, uh, you cannot undo it. So what... what what is recommended, remember this, uh, if you want to compress your pictures for your students to make the slides slim, save it as another file. Save it as another, let me repeat, save it as another file and then you compress it. Because once you compress it, the, the, the high, super high quality disappears. But the thing is, once you compress it, if you say your slide is 100 megabyte uh, and you compress it, it might go down just to 10, 8 megabyte especially if you're using very high end images. This is very powerful because when you upload to the LMS. So what I'm saying here is, when I select apply only to this picture, only this picture will be compressed. If I unselect this one, it will compress all the pictures on, on my presentation. Uh, all in one click, I compress all my pictures, which is very powerful. It doesn't say it there, but actually that's what it does. So it's when you unselect it. But, but remember, save as another file. So this is very powerful, very easy to compress all your pictures in that particular presentation by just unselecting this and clicking OK. I'm not going to click OK, but if I click OK, it will compress all my images and all my slides. Just like that. And you, and you can cut down your size tremendously, especially if you want to share to students, you want it to be light, that's a very easy way to do it, okay? So, okay, so, uh, so that's compressed pictures, okay? So that's about, enough about pictures, okay? Any questions regarding pictures? Okay, because uh, I know from my experience working with, especially medical, in the medical field, they use a lot of high-end images. And, and that can just make your presentation huge. And then you want to share it online and take, and if you don't have good bandwidth, it's not good for you, it's not good for the student, and you don't need to have high quality unless you're looking at a big screen, a TV screen or cinema screen, yes, but for, for a notebook, or you don't need, you can save it as a very compressed, it's okay. Okay, so that's pictures, okay, very powerful. Okay, 
So now I'm going to look at shapes. Uh, this is where I, I, I hope to do a drawing workshop with you. Is, is, this is where you can really design your own stuff, okay? Your own stuff, shapes, okay? So let's look at shapes, okay? Uh, shapes, okay. Okay, so we had shapes here. So let's look at shapes, okay? So you see this, all this is done with this, huh? All these shapes, you can do the most amazing thing. You see this here? What is this? This is a phone, right? So once you use shapes, so you can design all this very quickly. Even this guy here is designed with PowerPoint, just using shapes. All this is just shapes. So then you can make it colorful, right? You customize effects to make the shapes very powerful. Even this character here was designed in PowerPoint. I just wanted to make a point. I designed it with PowerPoint, okay? So let me just show you quickly, just the proof of concept, right? You, let's just go back to this. Uh, I'm gonna bring it, okay? I'm just gonna show you how powerful shapes and how fast you can design. I'm just gonna design quickly now with shapes, a uh, hand phone. Uh, I'm just showing you just to make a point. Huh? So hand phone here, uh, uh, I'm just gonna design a hand phone very quickly. And just to show how quickly you can design. So now the new iPhones do not have button, but let's just see we have the old hand phone with the button, huh? because it makes me more powerful, okay? Uh, okay, uh, insert, okay. Uh, let's go, I want to insert a uh, button here. I'm just going to show you how easy it is to, to design. Uh, okay. Okay, I just, uh, no, I just want to use effect option. Don't worry if you don't understand what I'm doing. It's not important. I'm just showing the capability. So you see here, I've just designed here. And then what I can do is now I can just uh, copy this one. And, and I can have my own... Uh, so this is not, the background is not nice. I just changed the background. Uh, let's just change the background format. Uh, let's choose some other backgrounds here. This is a nice color. Okay. So you can see I have this guy here. So this is, it's just quick. I'm not saying this is beautiful. We can maybe make it a bit more, uh, uh, maybe use the black inside, but it was stylish, yeah, something like that. You see that? But you see, once you use shapes and you design your stuff, it can be anything from an injection to a, a car, an engine, or a, 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 what do you call it? Anything you can imagine you can do with shapes. And this is the power of shapes. I know I showed it very quickly, but I just want you to remember with shapes, you can design the most amazing things. Because you have, as I said, you have the effects and so on. So shapes is really powerful. And I just want to ask you, how many of you actually design things with shapes, just using shapes? So these are shapes. You have shape effects, customized effects. So the first thing is you have shapes, all these shapes you can use, and you can insert the shapes. See, here, here I design even nicer. I have these buttons here. So it's here, the example. So once you play around, it's amazing. When I do these workshops, I get the people to design the most amazing thing with just using shapes. But you have to understand, when you start learning how to think in shapes, huh, you, you realize you can break down anything. Yeah, so posters. So shapes you can do. Sometimes you want to have a customized, because once you use shapes, you can change the color. For example, here, if I don't like the phone, I can make it, let's say I want it to be green. I can make it green. I can make it yellow. I can make it orange. I can make, if you use only pictures, it becomes a bit more complicated. I can make it a bit more 3D you know, uh, and so on. So you can keep on designing and play. And it's fun. And uh, you can design the most amazing things just using shapes, okay? So shapes is very powerful. And then once you've done the shapes, you can see this uh, guy here, I, I, I group them. Because if you have a lot of shapes, remember always to group them. So let me just go back to my, to just show you quickly on how to group. So say here, now I have, a, if I move, it, it doesn't move. If I were to resize, I select all and I resize, look at this. This is all messed up. So when you want to resize, you have to group them. So I just select all, right click. Okay, right click and then click group. So when you click group, they're all grouped. So now what happens? Look when I resize. They resize nicely together. Okay? Just to show again how bad it looks when, if, when it's, if it's not, if I select all and I don't group them, when I resize, it goes, this is all messed up. So what's important to do is always when you have a lot of shapes and you join them, you group them together. You group, 
boom. So when you resize, they resize together. Because this is something, a lot of people, they, they use these shapes, but they don't group them. So always remember to group. If you want them to be the same uh, functionality when you resize them. Uh, okay? Okay. And this is something that 99% people don't know. It's called edit points. And this is how I created the Yoda guy, is that you can actually create your own shapes. Okay, I'm gonna show you now. This, I think this is from 2013 or 2016 above, okay? Okay, let's look at this guy. Uh, look at this guy. Okay, I'm gonna show you something now. You, you're not gonna believe what I'm going to do now. Let's see if it can be done. Huh? Format, edit shape, edit points, look at this. Uh, look at that. You can edit points here. See, you can, people don't know this. That you, can, I'm not saying this is nice, but you, can, you can create your own messed up. Say, say it's something broken. Huh? Look at that. You say, okay, this is not a nice example. Uh, I'm just gonna have some fun. I just enjoy the fun. Huh? I just want to show you something. Say that you want to create a new character. Huh? Okay, I make it black. I use. Uh, I go to format, edit shape there. Oh, sorry. Edit shape, edit points, huh? edit points. And then have a bit fun. Huh? This is, you can, if you teach kids to do this, they can create their own cartoon characters very fast. Huh? I'm just sharing you for fun, just to, to show you the power of, uh, so I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm actually creating an eye. So I'm gonna create another one. I know I'm doing it very fast. I just want to show you the possibilities as so you get excited. And then we can talk about uh, later how you can. So then I group this one, group it, remember group it. And then I duplicate it and then I have another eye. And if you want to have, if you want to make it into mouth, you can make it into mouth. What I do now is I just take away the, he's screaming his lung out, right? And remember we had the edit points, right? Edit points, edit points. So you can make it, uh, So I created my own character very quick. I'm not saying it's nice, but this is just some examples. Uh, when you start adding points, you can get kids, especially to, to design all these characters very fast, come up with their own little unique, because what we do in this generation, you want them to explore the creative mindset. And this is where shapes and so can enable that. Even if you cannot draw, you can create the most amazing stuff with, with, within a few minutes, if you, if you understand the power of a uh, thing. So I just want to, in the chat box, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, let's go back to the thing here. Okay, uh, I, I still have problem with this chat box. It just, when I go to the PowerPoint, it disappears. So, so. where's my chat box? Uh? Okay, my chat box is not appearing. Okay, there it is, okay. Okay, you couldn't find edit points. Okay, please show again. Okay, I'm gonna show again, no problem. Okay, let's go back to the exit here. Edit points, uh, first you have to have a shape. Huh? You said, uh, let's just, just start again. I select the shape, say I have a square, I select the square. Okay, that one I'm sure you can do. You click on the square, you click on the square. I click on the square. You see here on the left side here, edit points. This one you cannot edit Y huh? because it's in the text mode. So I select it again. When it's not in text mode, I can edit now. I go to edit shape, I see edit points. Sometimes you don't see because you're not clicked correctly. Okay, you see that? I'll do it again. Huh? Click on the item. If I double click, uh, it's in text mode. I'm adding text so, you, so the, the edit points will be blocked. But if I click it once, click it once, you go to edit points, you go edit. This only, it's not for images, only for shapes, okay? You cannot edit points on images, only for shapes. I click edit points, and now I can start selecting the, okay. But don't worry, if you don't get it, you Google it, uh, uh, and you will find it, uh, definitely. I might create some videos on this, but it's anyway it's recorded, you can watch the recording again, hopefully you'll get it if you watch the recording. Okay. Yes, as, as Kola says, infusion of critical and creative thinking. Uh, this is very important for, Applying, this is when I teach drawing, I apply critical thinking together. When you apply it together, I call it the, the Leonardo da Vinci code. Uh, it's a real Leonardo to become the, the Da Vinci mindset, the ability to visualize and be able to illustrate your ideas to such a level that people can understand them. Yeah. 
And we think we need to play with PowerPoint more to see all these options. They are, but we never use them. Yes, Irene, true. Okay. So this is, I, I, we have to go a, a bit faster now because we are, I want to cover a few more things. Okay, so I'm just gonna share with you now, we can't do hands-on. I mean, not hands-on, but I'm showing, okay? So you can see here, you can also trace. These particular three items allows you to draw. So if you have a, what do you call it? You have this uh, uh, Wacom board or whatever, you can, you can draw with a mouse, but it's not easy to draw a mouse. But these three items in uh, the shapes allows you to draw. So you can draw, so you can trace, if you want to trace the heart and so on, you can trace. Okay, you can merge shapes. You can see here, look, look at these shapes here. I, I create the Batman sign by using merge shapes, using subtract. We can't go through this now, I'm just saying you, this is what you can do uh, using uh, merge shapes, okay? I think I want to show you that, that was too nice. So you can see uh, item. Uh. So what is merging? I just want to show you. Uh, let's just create Pac-Man. Huh? Okay. So say you have here, you have here, I have two, huh? so I have two. I changed the color, okay. So I have these two. So you see these two here? So what I do is I select the first one and then I select the other one. And then I go to here, up on the left side, merge sheds. You can see what happens. Look at what happens when I take union, that what happens. I do combine, this is what happens. When I do fragment, this is what happens. Intersect, and then I do subtract. So when I do subtract, you see here, I get another shape by combining two. It doesn't look like pack by shape, use triangle, but anyway, so you can see here. So these are different shapes. This is very good if you're doing engineering uh, uh, or doing uh, biology or chemistry. Sometimes you need to create your own shapes. Uh, you can do that uh, quite easily uh, by playing around with the merge shapes. Huh? Okay, but you have to have fun with it. It's a lot of fun. It takes time, but I'm I'm trying to give you shortcuts that are showing that at least the possibilities that you have in PowerPoint. Uh, but as, but sometimes don't worry about yourself. Get the students to do it. You know, <laughs> get your students to do to spice up your own content. <laughs> That's one of the assignments. Help them to spice up. Okay, and then you have the eyedropper. You can choose the color. I'm just gonna skip this. Okay, you can rotate objects. Uh, you can rearrange objects. You can align objects. Okay, this is it. So, so these are some of the things that I cover. Usually it takes, if you want to do hands-on, uh, this is uh, something that uh, it takes about three hours. Uh, usually it'll take me three hours to make the, the teachers or the educators to really master it to the, to the level that they're, they're confident enough to, to use it for their teaching and learning. Yeah? So these are, but remember, uh, recap, huh? very good. Huh? Uh, you can manipulate images. You can crop. You can, uh, you can remove background. You can play around with them, with the artifacts. And in terms of shapes, we did a lot of stuff, right? You can do merge, subtract. Uh, you can do the, there's a lot of things with shapes. Shapes is very, very powerful to design. Because if you think in shapes, huh, it's, it, this is also critical thinking. You're learning critical thinking at the same time, visualizing, breaking everything into shapes and designing your own stuff, okay? So this is, so that's what I'm trying to say. PowerPoint is actually a very good tool to design uh, awesome graphics, huh? Okay, you can use camera, okay, forget about that. Okay, transition animations, you can do a lot in animations. I wanna focus on one thing, eh? transitions, animations, fine. I wanna focus on animated GIF, because that's something that, this is only in 2019, that you can do animated. I'm just showing some examples of uh, my, uh, this one I did, uh, was done 13 years ago uh, in PowerPoint. Uh, the one I'm going to show you now. Uh, it's a video on how you can do a lot of amazing animations, but this is, I, I got a challenge. Uh, uh, and I didn't have a team, so I just had to do it in PowerPoint. Uh, so basically, uh, to, to, to show milestones, what I did is I did, uh, you can see here, the globe is jumping over, the globe comes there and it jumps over every hurdle, and every hurdle, the milestone will come up, okay? This was already done in 2008. Uh, this was from 2008, yeah. So this you can already do in 2008. Uh, uh, but it's not about, the thing is the possibilities. So, so for those people that don't have the skill to use more advanced tools, this, uh, PowerPoint can do the basic stuff, you know. Okay, I'm gonna skip this. So this is just some example of, this is another example. Uh, I use animation. I teach gamification. I, I stopped teaching that, but I, I, I gamify using my workshops. So we have like in, in between the content, we have a mission. So then just for fun, so every time we move from one, so they know that I have eight missions during my workshop. So then you can have going down to the planet and then they get the task. And then they can go to the next. So this is just simple animation done in. PowerPoint, or you can have spaceships flying different directions. Okay, 
Remember, as I said today, I'm just showing you to excite you. So don't be worried if you don't know how to do it. It's about knowing about possibilities. If you have smart art, I don't use much smart art, but if you want to use smart art, you can design a lot of, if you're doing like business and so on, you can animate. So instead of just showing you one at one time, you can actually animate it. Then, because that, that's chunking. Remember we talked about chunking? When you animate, uh, it becomes more exciting because if you just show them everything, like if I just show you everything from the beginning, it becomes just too much information and you don't want that, right? Uh, and now animated GIF, okay? Uh, this is an, uh, this is, I didn't do this. This is just an example of animated GIF, creating these images that uh, it's, not, it's not a video. It's just to show, illustrate something in an animated way. It's basically combining different images together. Okay, so in the chat box, are you familiar with animated GIF? Okay, but you've seen I'm, a lot of time in PowerPoint, you see something, these pictures that move and so on, right? <laughs> Actually, animated GIF is just a few images put together, uh, but you can do it in straight in PowerPoint now. What you can do is you can just create a few images together and you can save it as the animated GIF and you can share it on social media, but more important, you can share it in your slides. So I want to show you an animated GIF I did yesterday. It took me about one hour to do. I'm going to share the whole process I did and show the output, okay? It's a bit more of a fun. It's not so serious, but you, you will show you. But the good thing is you just do your PowerPoint presentation. You save it as an animated GIF. You don't save it as a video. You don't save it as a slide. You save it as an animated uh, uh, GIF, okay? Uh, she said you didn't know about smart. Smart art is there, but smart art is challenging to put in text because it keeps on adjusting, yeah. But smart art has a lot of good designs, okay? Okay, don't worry. Uh, Nomsa says I'm so ignorant. No, don't worry. Uh, these are things that, because maybe you never had time. But now you know you, you can explore more. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kola says most of what students do is presentation in Nigeria is in Word point. Or is it because they don't have Microsoft? You don't have to use Microsoft, but uh, is it because they don't have Microsoft products? Or is it they just like to use Microsoft Word or Word point, which is an open source platform? Okay. I got 18 minutes left, so I just want to share with you the things and then we can discuss. Uh, don't worry if you didn't know, we can, okay. Okay, so I just want to show you, it's quite fun. I had fun, I share, I, I didn't know you can develop animated GIF, and I know about animated GIF, but I didn't know you can do it in PowerPoint, especially in 2019, you can do it yourself. So this is an example, but first you do animated GIF, you have to have an idea. So what I did is I use, uh, I use, uh, Autodesk Sketchbook, which is a free drawing tool. Uh, it runs on any, it runs on computer, it runs on Android, it runs on Apple, and it runs on iOS, okay? So I, I use iPad, I, I draw, I like to draw a lot. So I, what I did is I drew this, it looks, if you think it looks bad, okay, if you don't, if you think it looks nice, I can teach you how to draw like this. This is not difficult, but with a bit of practice, a bit of uh, training, you can draw things. So I draw my items from, I had my idea, I want to have this animated GIF. Uh, a scenario, I had coronavirus and melting and sun and so on. So I drew all the items, I cropped them, and then I put them into PowerPoint. So what I did is, I'm just showing what I did is, okay, let me just, you can see here. So what I did is I put all the images according to the animation I wanted, okay? And then after I did that, I saved it as a, I went, after I did that, I went to file, export, and there, create an animated GIF, that's it. You can save it as an animated GIF and then it becomes a picture. Just, just show me, I'll just show you the output and we will repeat again. Huh? And this is what it looks like, the output, okay? After I finish, this is with transition. Huh? Let's just take a look at it. This is what it looks like. So the coronavirus comes out and it melts. This is only still images, but it looks, it has some flow, okay? Hi, uh, Samuel, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, uh, so you can see here, this is a different version using transition. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you have ideas on designing different things related to whatever subject you're teaching, you can do that with animated GIF. You just need to create your presentation as an individual presentation and save it as a animated GIF. Okay, so I'm just gonna recap how, how I did it again. Huh? Okay, so you can see here, making a, the first thing is you, you design, a, if you want to create an animated GIF, 
you design your presentation and the images and so on. You can reuse from elsewhere or you can create your own. And then once you finish, uh, you, you click the file, as I mentioned, you go to export and then uh, you create animated GIF and then uh, you, you, you check here, which is the, you have options here, uh, small file size, uh, seconds per each slide and then create GIF, okay? So this is a possibility to create images uh, that you can import into your presentation, not only reuse, but you can create your own, okay? This is a bit advanced, but I just want to share, I want you to know that this feature is available, that, uh, at least in PowerPoint, the latest one. And then the last thing we're gonna cover today for the next 10 minutes is, I want to add audio. I want to create uh, a presentation or generation. So you can do that in PowerPoint also, and you can publish it as a video, and you can, uh, uh, what do you call it? Make it available as e-learning content, okay? But one thing I want to share with you first is, because uh, I've been talking, I've been showing a lot, I want you to ask yourself, how, how do you feel about your own voice? Because a lot of people, when they start recording their own voice, they're very uncomfortable. I don't know about in Africa and Middle East, but I know Asians, especially Malaysians, they're not very, very, very often not very comfortable with voice. So I just want to ask you in the chat, but can you describe your own voice according to your own opinion in one or two words? How do you describe your voice? Here are some examples, slow, annoying, fast, loud, well, how do you describe your own voice in the chat box? Okay, uh, loud, 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 slow and boring. See, <laughs> it's very interesting, you know, this is normal, because if you want to do e-learning, you have to get comfortable with your voice. Huh? Uh, okay, great, Irene is very happy with the voice. Uh, Frida says husky, okay. Samuel, loud, he's very loud, Samuel is very loud. But it's normal, to not like your voice is normal. I also personally, when I listen to my voice, sometimes I feel uncomfortable, I realize I speak too fast. So it's normal not to like your voice. It's just, so don't be stressed if you don't like your voice or you're uncomfortable with voice or you have some negative perception on your voice, okay? Nomsa said I sound like a young kid. So don't be, don't feel bad about, okay, uh, Jaiso likes his voice, great. Don't be uncomfortable with voice. Even if you don't like your voice, you can always work on it. Uh, whether you want it to be more passionate or and so on. So I just want to share with you a few things. This is very important information. Huh? Uh, this is another drawing I did. Uh, there's some research on this. Usually your speech rate is about 150 to 200 words per minute in between there. That's the sweet spot. If you speak faster, people might struggle. If you speak slower, people fall asleep. But some other tips. Huh? Silence is a good way to gain attention. I'm talking a lot now. If I were to stop, It's an easy way to gain your attention. Huh? <laughs> so that's a way, sometimes when you want to say something really important, you're talking a lot and people are like, okay, you just stop. And that's a very, one easy way to gain attention. Slowing down on key points. So when I want to say something key points, I slow down. Uh, it's a good way. And when I'm excited, sometimes you want to sell something, an idea, it doesn't have to be a product. You excite, your voice gets excited. Oh, this is so great. <laughs> so. You energize, if you want to make something inside, you energize it uh, through speeding up. You speak a bit faster. Uh, and it's good to know, because if you're doing, uh, how many of you have designed e-learning content, okay? Gabriel, I like my voice very much, okay? Gabriel, awesome. When you record, do you write a script or not? Or you just record like that? I, I know what to say, I don't need the script. Or do you have a script? Yes, script? yes, say yes if you have a script, no if you don't have a script. Okay, so this is some of the challenges. Should I use the script or not? Uh, there's no right and wrong here, uh, but if you're doing a very short presentation, uh, it's good to use the script. It's very easy. Just write a script, uh, unless you are 100% you know, sure what to say. If you're a perfectionist, it's good to have a semi-script because perfectionists sometimes they record for the whole day. They're never happy and they just never get done. If you're comfortable and you can record and get things done, then you don't really need a script. Okay, if it's a long presentation, it's a lot to write. You don't have time to write a script. But my recommendation in general is if it's a short presentation, it's, it's a very important presentation, it's gonna be evaluated. Uh, preparing a short script just to make sure you say the right things and cover is, is not a good, bad idea. If it's a very long presentation, don't write a full script, you don't have time, just the outlines, you make sure that you cover all aspects. Uh, but it depends, uh, it depends. If I, oh, these days I don't use the script, I just, because you have the slides anyway, because when you record. But you wanna, be, you wanna be clear, you wanna be straight to the point, or some people wanna, but babble all along. But this is some of the challenges when you prepare. Should I have a script or should I not have a script? 
you have to find out that thing yourself. But if you're not efficient, you're not effective, you spend hours doing nothing, just recording and deleting, recording, then you need a script for sure. But if you can get things done and the students are happy and they understand what you're saying, then maybe a script is not <laughs> necessary. Okay. So these are things. Okay. So I want to share with you something very interesting. Uh, this is from TED Talks. Huh? These are the 10 top TED Talks uh, uh, on education. Huh? Uh, Ken Robinson, he speaks at the rate of 195. 195 words per minute on average uh, yeah so it's a good so if you if you speak at, if you know your pace average pace it's easy to write a script because uh, you already know uh, if I got to uh, say here uh, if I know I'm speaking at 150 words per minute if I'm going to speak for three minutes if I write I the most I can do is 150 minutes 150 words per for that three minute session so if I write a 1000 word script it's too long already so that's the good thing about knowing your average pace, okay? So these are some of the top speakers in the world of the average pace. Of course, they make it silent, they speed up, slow down, but on the average, these are the averages here. And this is the overall average, 176. You can test yourself. You just check, you take your recording, your 10 minute recording, you <laughs> count yours and divide it by 10 and you get your average uh, speech rate, which is good to know, especially when you want to write scripts and so on, okay? We don't need this, okay? So you can learn a lot from TED Talks. You can learn how to, to speak. There are a lot of books on TED Talks. You can watch just watching TED Talks. What I like about TED Talks is we can apply this to teaching and learning, especially in terms of the content development and when you want to talk and so on and, and how to approach it. You can see here, bring emotion, have a conversation. I think conversation is the most power, one of the most powerful tools. Tell a story. Uh, uh, be, tell something new that people don't know. That makes it exciting. Make it memorable. How to make it stick. Let me talk about the star moment. So these are things that are straight out of the book from most TED Talks, the good ones. Have humor, you know? So these are things that we can learn from TED Talks, okay? So that's basically things to keep in mind because the voice is so important. Uh, when you go online, the voice is even more important because you don't see your whole body. <laughs> you just see me, I'm talking. Maybe I'm waving my hand. You don't see my upper body, lower body. You just see my face, my voice. So when you're doing online e-learning and you're doing webinars, your voice becomes like it's amplified. So you have to find ways to be powerful. So, so these are the things that you have to keep in mind. Your voice is so important. So uh, try to work on it. I'm not saying to be fake, but find the inner voice in yourself the, when you're passionate because everybody is passionate in something. If you can bring out that passion in your voice when you teach, it becomes such more, more inspiring than just reading out loud and, you know, today. I could speak like this today, you know. The, I'm going to teach you how to record a slideshow, okay? We're going to the next slide, okay? Are you okay? Okay? Okay, okay? I mean, <laughs> it doesn't, uh, so you have to try to find yourself. At the same time, you want to be energized, but don't want to take, you don't want to take away yourself. You want to be yourself. At the same time, be passionate and engaging. And it can be calm. You have, just have to find yourself, okay? Uh, okay. So the next five minutes, uh, we don't have much time uh, to cover. But the good thing is I've actually exposed you to things that takes one day. But the good thing is you know these are available, so don't be worried about how to do it. You know this is capable uh, in PowerPoint and you've learned some things on design, okay? So what the good thing is, in PowerPoint itself, you can record, okay? I'm gonna share with you, I have recordings on this. The six videos you can watch on how to do it. So, so don't worry, I'm going fast now. I will share in the chat box, and I will share with Irene to share with you. Six videos on how to record and compress and all this is all there. Animated GIF, I've done a video on that. It's all there. So. So you can, but what is good is you can do all this in PowerPoint. You can record, you can synchronize. You can see here, you have record buttons. You can uh, synchronize with your animation. So you can have your audio synchronized with your animation. All this can be done in PowerPoint. And once you finish, you can. You can do something like Khan can. You can even draw in your PowerPoint while uh, teaching, okay? I'm gonna skip all this and you can export your video. I'm gonna skip all this. The reason I'm gonna skip all this because I've already created videos on how to do this, which I will share in the chat box. I wanna spend the last five to 10 minutes, I want to discuss with you things that you want to know or things in, in general about e-learning design that you want to explore. So these are just things that you can do. But the most important, I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about teaching people how to be more original, not just reusing everything out there, creating your own stuff, not just talking your own stuff, your visuals, not just the text, your visuals also. Uh, so you, otherwise, you want to be born an original, don't die a copy. You're born an original, don't just copy everything, try to create your own stuff. I think that's one of the things that we want to see more from, uh, especially I'm from Malaysia, I see a lot of people doing a lot of great presentations, 
but it's not a lot of original. They're just reusing great images out there. But what about themselves? Can they design their own personalized content themselves that is really passionate and inspiring? Okay, so I'm going to stop now. Uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm actually going to stop sharing. Eh? I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, I'm here. Uh, and I want to invite, if somebody wants to say something, they can say something. I'm going to share with the link. I have a link on, on all the videos uh, on how to, except for the graphics I do not have, but on how to create a PowerPoint and all that I have already. I'm going to make it available in the chat box. I'm going to get Irene to, uh, uh, to here, you can see the tutorials in the chat box now. I'm going to make it all that available. The reason I didn't, I'm not worry because I made, I created videos and all that, how to record in PowerPoint, make ordination, export it, how to animate the GIF, it's all there. So I want, for the last five to 10 minutes I have with you, maybe I'll never see you again. And uh, maybe you can uh, share the, mo the most important lesson you have learned today. And if not, just ask me a question. Uh, I'll be around for now, at least for five minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, but I wanted to, to change, uh, uh, Prof. Dr. Muhammad, yeah, thanks from uh, Egypt. Thank you for inviting me. So now is the time to ask me any questions. Uh, or just share with us what one lesson you have learned today, the most important lesson you learned, so we can maybe discover that from you. Okay. Um, since not everybody can speak, the, the we can have In one or room. two people. Yes, uh, yeah. one or two people put on their videos to say the experience, and then the rest of us can just. Uh, yeah, put I'll it mute in the my. Chat room, I'll please. also mute. I don't need to talk anymore. <laughs> no, you are excellent. You're fantastic. So. We keep it. I'm just saying. I think let the anybody wants to speak up now is a good time to share. Uh, maybe they have some things that are not covered that they want to share. Something amazing stuff that they're doing or anything. Uh, maybe the most important lesson they learned today. Uh, something that they want to apply after this workshop. There is a request for you to come back. Um, uh, physically so, or virtually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think both. I, I, I think after COVID, it would be possible for people to invite you in their countries. I think so. No, I, you I know, the interesting now... I, was, I was already we were working on a proposal to Rwanda, me and uh, not me. I say, this guy, Arthur Basha, rec recommended me. So we were, he was proposing to Rwanda that I come there and inspire them to, to design um, uh, basically good e-learning content and, and, and experience it, designing amazing learning experience to, to inspire the students and using technology specifically. Yeah. Uh, Lucy, please put on your video so that we can see you as you, I can see your hand is up. So please uh, put in on yeah. your video so that you can speak to us, please. Yeah, so thank you for all the feedback. I'm getting a lot of positive. I like negative feedback. If you want to slam me, it's okay. I can get, I can work on that. So. <laughs> yeah. Please go on, Lucy. Lucy, yeah. Lucy, talk, Hi. talk. <laughs> Hi. So now I'm listening to my voice. I don't know whether I'm loud, whether I'm hoarse, whether I'm sleepy, whether I'm slow. Uh, Zaid, thank you very much. This has been amazing. One of my objectives was to be able to learn graphics okay. and not only graphics, but to be able to learn uh, how to create course content. And what you have taught me today is that it's always been under my nose. I use PowerPoint every day, but oh, I okay. never think about those features. And yes, I was rushing against time as you were showing us how you were doing it. And occasionally, <laughs> I, I know. I, 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 yeah. uh, but you know what, Zaid? I've got homework now. I am going to sit on my PowerPoint and I'm going to learn, learn, learn. So yes, okay. you have met my objectives today. Thank you All so right. much. Thank you so much. Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, what, what, one thing that I didn't cover, maybe. Maybe share one thing that you wanted me to talk about, but I didn't uh, ex explore. Is there anything that particular, maybe? Uh... No, it's very cheeky of me, but it is how to set out the content. You know, the copy, uh, you've shown us the graphics, but then uh -huh. what appears on the screen, you've given us the, the do's and the don'ts, whether it should okay. be more content or not, but what should it look like? What is the ideal PowerPoint in different okay. scenarios? And I know that's homework. Okay. For me. I will go back and okay. do that. Yeah. In the only thing I can say is that that's something that uh, you have to, it's like engineering, medical, uh, 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 business, uh, sociology. So they, that's where we have to identify masters and they will recommend, because my design is generic. So you have to, that's where you have to learn from the best of the best. So that's what, what we were planning to do. Actually, one of the things we wanted to do when we went to, if you go to Rwanda, was to teach, train the trainers in different fields and they will become masters of their field and they can customize it. This is what they will find a formula 
that's best for engineering maybe and then form so that's something you have to work uh, work with the specialists in the different areas because i i'm just generic <laughs> although i've worked with many fields i cannot say this is the best way to do things uh, so that's one of the challenges that's great that's that makes the academics more fun that's what i love about e-learning and content is that there's no best way there's always another way to do it better thank uh, you so, but, yeah, okay thank you lucy thank you we have we have a uh, Baudet. I think I'm pronouncing, I'm trying here. Um, can you turn on your video if you would like and speak to us? I know Kalawole cannot uh, turn on his video, but he will still speak to us and then we'll end it there. Oh, okay, Ayabod, okay, sure. can, you, can you speak? Can you talk to us? You can unmute Hello. yourself or can I? Yes, please talk to us. Hello. Hello. Yes. Oh, Irene. Hello, Zaid. Hello, hello. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. This is a wonderful presentation. Um, I, I had a busy a busy day yesterday, so I'm still taking my time to still rest on my lie on my bed. Uh, but I must say that really done well, honestly. I, I, I would have known how I would have felt if I missed this, uh, this presentation. You've done a great job. Uh, but um, I, I, like I said, I will still want you to come back. Yeah, I see this aspect of um, how to use PowerPoint to do video recording that are not touched. Uh, like I, I put in the chat box, there are so many things that we have at the tips of our fingers that we don't, uh, we are not aware of. And then some of these things that are shown to us today, it's, uh, it's amazing. So thank you very much. But like I said, we will still want you back. I know everybody will want that. Okay, but that, I made, oh, thank, thank, thank you very much. I'm very happy, I'm uh, posit very positive, I'm very touched. But I just wanna say, I've made uh, the link available there because uh, I have uh, videos on how to, to create uh, videos uh, in PowerPoint. I have, uh, that's why I didn't, not worry, talk too much. I have actually five, six videos in on YouTube on how to design in PowerPoint. The, the, what do you call it? The record and then publish it and then animate it's already there. So the, if you go to the URL later, maybe you can check it out for those who want to have homework. <laughs> if you get okay. any homework. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, they work, yeah. uh, the final uh, speaker, Ayabo there. would you like to uh, speak? And that would be the final speaker so that we finish on time. Okay, Damarari, good luck. Uh, okay, I, a lot of people say thank you. Uh, thank you to everyone. Thank you for being with me for two hours. Uh, took two hours of your life. <laughs> okay, the YouTube link is here. Okay, so I can put it again. It looks like um, uh, 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 everybody has spoken. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for accepting our invite. Uh, thank you to Mohammed for finding you. We appreciate you for bringing you into our lives. And I think we are going to organize something else with you um, in, in, in the coming days and we'll share it with everybody in our network and uh, everybody. So thank yeah. you so much. But, thank okay, you for okay, your so one thing, yeah? but, yes, but what we could do maybe in a, a follow-up later, maybe after Raya or the Eid, is, is just to have a, a PowerPoint q and I mean, I will call, I'll, if nobody asks questions, I'll just go through slowly, but focus on uh, on specific things that they have. If, especially if they go through my videos, they can, they'll start having more and more questions. You know, you can have a practical one, then we can have the drawing one. So you can have, if you want, you can have two focusing on, uh, one is, is the practical of PowerPoint and another one is uh, the drawing. Because I'm very passionate about drawing. Because once you can draw, it will liberate you uh, from being dependent on always using copyrighted materials. You can do the most amazing thing, just using a whiteboard or using a digital tool like an iPad with a stylus. Uh, so that, okay. But anyway, that's what I want to say. It's already six o'clock. But again, thank you very much, Irene, for being a great host. Thank you very much for being with me yesterday to make sure everything went well. And also thank you for Jakob. And also thank you very much to uh, uh, Dr. Ahmad or Muhammad. I'm, I always get Muhammad, Ahmad, Muhammad. Okay. Uh, well, he, he's, he's uh, we've known each other on and off for quite a long time, actually. I, we, we never met, but we just somehow met online. Thank you, Salah. Uh, Thanks, Salah, Oh, hello, Salah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. It was fun. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, then. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. We'll be sharing a lot of things with you um, through the emails that you shared with us when you're, uh, you're, you're uh, registering. And we appreciate you. We appreciate your time. 
and Zaid, we look forward to the next session that we'll have with you. So for now, for you, Zaid, is good evening. For the rest of us, it's uh, good afternoon and some of us, good morning. So enjoy your day, wherever you are or your evening, wherever you are. Thank you very much from Image Africa and we look forward for the next webinar. Bye for okay. now. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Please remember to, uh, to, to, to uh, fill in the um, feedback form. Um, I've just shared something that we are going to have the next uh, time. This is what is coming up. And please uh, give us your feedback because this feedback helps us in organizing for the next one. So this is what we are going to have on the 27th of May. So if you're able to join us, that will be great. Bye for now.